Hello, hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. It's a very good morning uh, for a boy in Singapore. Uh, Zal, you are early, my friend. But welcome. Good to see you here, bud. Hope you're well. Uh, I saw Zal went to Tokyo for a minute. You have to tell us how that went uh, today, Zal. In chat. Stefan, hello. Good evening. Uh, from the UK. And then Jason Gillis. Uh, how's it going? Not bad. Uh, feeling better. Um, been a good week. Uh, feels like yesterday was Monday. <laughs> like we lost a day. Uh, you know, things are busy. Does, does, does that make sense? Springtime, summertime. It's like, like the days kind of start to really blend together. Uh, he said it just got back from Seattle though. Okay, nice. Yeah, you probably had a mix of weather up there. Murad, howdy y'all. Joe Bringus, hey Mike and crew. And Kyle Williams says, hey folks, sunny and getting warm along the Gulf Coast. I am jealous. Update, my car is back from the workshop looking looking brand new again. Well, congratulations, Al. Uh, I know that was probably super bad, stressful, but glad that's all fixed. Well, and Steve Jones says, hello, fellow modelers from around the world. Enjoy an evening on the rock. Jack Daniels on the rocks under a beautiful sunny sky. I'm jealous. <laughs> Sounds lovely. Um, give me a little splash of Coke of mine, please. Jack's a little bit on that, uh, that side of the, the cup of tea for me. Uh, I tend to lean a little bit more like a Tillamore do, a little bit more of a smoky peaty uh, on the rock is kind of a clean sipping. And then usually I put a little splash of something in the other stuff or an old fashioned or a Manhattan or something. That's usually my go-to. Uh, Matt 58 says hello and everyone in chat. Good to see you, Matt. How are you, brother? And then Ben Barr says hello from Jersey Shore. Uh, hit the like button, everybody. Thumbs up. Drugo, hello, Nikolai. Glad to see you online. How are you? I'm well. Hope you're doing good, Nikolai. How's your Sherman coming along? Your Korean War Sherman. Uh, doing some good stuff, I see. We've got a hello from a Cameron Corliss. That's a new name. Hello, Cam. Welcome. Uh, yeah, me and the family are moving there in July. Ooh, okay. All right, Jay. That's a change of scenery. Um, I don't know how Seahawks fans take the Cowboy fans. Probably not very well. <laughs> but it'll be good times. Seattle is a, is a great uh, is a great metro. Uh, I'm guessing probably work for you. Yeah, most likely. That's probably a, a, a nice a nice change, at least weather-wise. You'll go from Dallas, yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, you know, but it's uh, you're going into four four seasons with a lot more wet. So that's a that's a pretty stout change. Um, Greg Mix says hello from a sunny Atlanta. How are you, Greg? How's work going, bud? Uh, Phil Bonafini says hello. How's it going? Wasatch Modeler says hey, and then Joe says best Irish whiskey. Tillamore doing is my go. -to. Yeah, it's a. In terms of sipping whiskeys, like just when I'm out and about, like I'm not spending money. I'm not trying to pull a 25 year old, you know, scotch off the shelf or, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, grow it up and try to outdo people with, you know, my whiskey knowledge. <laughs> Tillamore Dew is fantastic sipping whiskey. Uh, question Does anyone have the app by Tillamore Oil Paint? Is it supposed to be liquid, juicy, like engine grease? Oh, Bitamy. Uh, Bitamy Oil Paint? No, nah, I don't know. I've not seen that color. That might be a new name or one of the old tubes have been renamed that color. The only one that I know is Al, as far as I'm, as far as my knowledge is concerned, is Angie Grease is the only one that has additional linseed oil added intentionally. Um, but that knowledge goes back. That's that's a 10 year old story. So I don't know what the current situation is. Paul the Toe says hello and everyone in chat. How are you, Paul? Good to see you. Uh, okay, Jay, that's awesome, man. Pacific Northwest, bro. I like that. And that was kind of the thing was I grew up in Southern California. You know, it is basically Dallas. It's basically a desert with we water the shit out of everything. So it's kind of greener than normal. But um, when you move from a climate that is mostly sunny, 250, 300 days a year, kind of dry to Pacific Northwest, that is four legitimate seasons. It's it's uh, like I liked it. I get to wear jackets, <laughs> to wear hats, to wear boots, to wear all the manly stuff. You know, it's not flip flops and shorts all the time. <laughs> That was my jam. I was like, okay, I like that. No, it's good up here. I like it up here. All the bad news aside, it's it's a it's a good area to live more more than not, for sure. Um, it has been a long winter though, I will say. About every five, six years we get these winters like this. Um yeah, because it's what middle of May and it still was barely over 50 degrees this morning. Uh Corey, there you are. Are you on your lunch again? Not in the subway. You're funny, dude. Nog in the nog. How are you, brother? How are you hanging in there, man? 
boy now got the COVID. Uh, said it wasn't too bad though, so that's good. Yeah, I bet my head cold was probably worse than yours. I was I was pretty out of it for a couple of days. You guys kind of caught the peaks of it. I did a couple of videos on Patreon and, and the streaming on Friday, and it was a mess. I was a wreck, dude. The weekend I was a wreck. Uh, what's up, Pete Tui? You made it on time, my friend. You did, sir. Uh, how are you doing back east? I tried to me a white mixed water instead of X20A. Worked like a charm for whitewashing. Yep. So Ben Barr is mentioning, uh, did you get the book, Ben? Did you get your book by, by, by chance? I haven't checked the shipping. Uh, Joe Gringa says, Vitamin is, uh, um, is about the same shade as engine grease without the extra oil shine. Okay. I'm wondering if they changed the formula and they could have. So my knowledge is limited now, um, but AK bought up 502 and I don't know how much crossover. I don't know if it is one company anymore. I don't have any knowledge of that. Um, so some of, you know, who's handling the 502 oils in that, I don't know, unfortunately. Uh, Robert, here you are. How's Boston doing? Sunny breeze, sea breeze, keeping it cool today. Nice, man. Yeah, so it's, uh, so Zal, in, in that case there, then you do what I did with the wilder oils. You just, you just squeeze a lot of it at the top right out, man. Get a paper towel or something and just juice some of that out of there and get that out of there a little bit out of the tube and it'll help. Maybe put the cap on and kind of squeeze it and, and manipulate it a little bit. You might be able to, to, to shift that up a bit. But that's what the cardboard's for, man. All that kind of stuff. I never use the paints raw anyway, so it's it's always coming out and going on to something to, to, to break it down. Whatever the word is I'm looking for. Um, but Zhao says, yeah, he's uh, he's still working on that. And then your degrees, uh, your degrees is sunny today. Bill's in, okay. All right. Uh, Dylan Van Gron. Hello from South Africa. The cool South Africa. Not yet. Okay, Ben. Yeah, Ben, that's probably going to be there today. Um, I've noticed, um, I think last stream, a couple of you guys in the Jersey, New York vicinity, the shipments from me um, seem to be weirdly affected. Like, I get my deliveries to all the guys in the rest of the country, at least the U.S. orders, um, but those books go into that particular part of the country. I've noticed, like, twice as long for whatever reason. I'm guessing there's a hang up in one of the, like Portland goes to probably some point in the in the postal system somewhere and that distribution point probably has a hang up somewhere and it's causing you guys delays. Usually four to five days is tops for us, at least in terms of uh, eternal US shipping. Uh, Paul Iris says, Mike, been a while. Uh, been a while live, looking forward to the episode. Sweet. Yeah, there's probably a lot of aircraft guys today. So I'm expecting that. Uh, I spent most of my day yesterday, uh, the second half, about six hours in all the markings on the Tempest, uh, combination of spray masks, uh, repainted the spinner, the stripe, all the, the, the letters um, underneath as well. Put the gear doors on. Uh, they don't fit very well, but I got them in there. <laughs> so we'll talk about all that today. I did some shipping last night um, just to kind of make sure everything was going well. Uh, we'll have a lot of conversations today. Um, not argumentative, but we'll, I'll just discuss with you how I did my decals, uh, what went good, what went bad. Um, because there's no varnish conversation premeditated. There's no varnish down on the model first. There's decals straight on the matte paint. Um, decals were pretty old. Uh, we're talking 40 years old, probably maybe 30 to 40 year old decals. Not the best call, but it's all I had in that letter size. Um, in fact, I went through half the alphabet just to get this and it ended up being a GBR or BRG, depending if you drive a Subaru or not, or Great Britain. <laughs> Whatever the whatever the code words or letters were for, uh, yeah, I, I had a I had, we have some stories to tell. Uh, good stuff, good good good. Um, Sharon and I guess you'd say. Phil said it's 72 degrees. Okay, that's that's about perfect, Phil. I'm a 73 guy, but I'll take 72. Um, L skill model, yeah, Dylan. Cold is coming, man. Yeah, you guys in South. So I'm guessing. My New Zealand boys in South Africa and all you guys are kind of rolling into winter. That works. <laughs> Up here, we're getting warm. Down there, you're getting cold. That's the extent of my, my science. Uh, teacher always got mad at me because I never did my homework. Um, export laws. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Um, cold enough, yeah. How's European shipping going? Uh, we are back, Nero, we're back up and running, man. So uh, European shipping is, um, we're functional. RSP is fully functional again. We are, we've relocated. Um, we have one container coming to the US for me for, I'm gonna take half the inventory in the States now. 
what I had planned or what I had, what I had broken down into everything is, uh, Um, yeah, so what, what I had done was we'd broken down inventory between Europe and, and the U.S. And I had originally had located everything inside of Europe with my original partners. Um, but that deal's over. Um, so we're in the midst. But we're fully functional again. So we're back up and running, which is good. Carlos Almeida says, hey, Mike, hey, chat. Um, Matt says, just order something from Seattle. See how long it takes. Yeah, it depends if it comes. So I ship media mail, Matt. There's also that. But I've noticed first class. A couple of shipments of first class, just unrelated stuff. It took like a month to get to New York. Because um, I think the last shipments to you, Matt, were pretty slow as well from me in terms of media mail. Uh, priority mail doesn't seem to be super affected. Maybe they're just prioritizing priority mail. Um, but Christian says hello and leave it up to you to figure out if it's, it's, uh, if it's a folk or D7, Tempest, or Lancaster. Uh, that window behind your back. Yeah. Um, yeah, coach getting cold. Um, yeah, L, I'm sorry. I, I was probably not a, a very helpful on your email the other day, by the way, you know, you're to me a clear flat, clear, whatever conversation. I, I kind of, I'll go through what I use today and then we'll just go from there. I don't know if it'll be helpful or not. Um, so Zalas, any new die cast? No new die cast. Uh, I have crane, uh, in terms of weathering die cast projects coming up in terms of other die cast things that I bought, nothing. Uh, I actually went to the store and I looked at the recent Hot Wheels and there's nothing that really excited me. I almost got the yellow Bugatti EB110, but I don't know. Just wasn't feeling it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's hot in central Illinois. Happened too fast. Yeah. Hey, Mike, it's good. Hydrate 90 today. Wow. Okay. You guys have got warm fat. All right. What else we got? Um, yeah, I don't really have much. We're, we're kind of a back to normal. It's kind of nice not to complain about it. I mean, outside of just life, it's, you know, we're good. I guess I should just keep going. Let's just roll. Let's do it. So over here. All right, Mr. Tempest. Um, nothing new on the, on the P61. I'm just kind of showing it for posterity's sake. <laughs> Uh, the, the, the thing with aircraft modeling in particular is to get to the point where you actually all want to see me do stuff, which is basically the weathering um, outside of the paint job and everything else. I mean, there's some to watch for that. It's, you know, nothing magical with painting. Um, painting's painting sometimes. There's a lot of noise, Nero. Is it, uh, you guys hearing me okay? Is the music too loud? Switch the music up. Sound check, everybody good? Mic check? It's right there. Everything's functioning on my side. I hear myself okay, Nero. Uh, maybe restart your window, your browser. Um, yeah, voice a little low compared to the music. Okay, hold on one second. Let's see what we got here. Setting. Oh, I know what I did. I turned my my I turned my mic down for video call. Is that better? It was a lot of static. Okay. Um, let me check connections. Hold on. Static's usually a loose connection. Hold on, guys. Okay. Check the computer connections. Okay. Mic check, everything better? Okay, thank you guys. Yeah, just if anything like that, please mention. Um, sometimes it's you guys, sometimes it is me. Um, that sounds a little better. I think there was a loose, the one was a little bit off. I've been kind of messing with the cords and the setup anyway and doing some stuff, so I apologize for that. Um, <laughs> you're 3,000 miles away. Um, good with the sound, Stephen Wheeler, Howard, Dave Priest. Sounds a lot better, okay, thank you guys. Yeah, if this ever sounds shitty, let me know because it shouldn't sound crappy at all. Uh, we've got the latest, greatest tech. <laughs> I do need a whole new deal though. So I could probably move this up a little bit closer here. Let me put this right here. Put the mic a little closer, put this a little closer. And there we go, I'm gonna get a little more. All right, all right, boys. Oil palettes over here. 
all the paints um let me do it actually let me let me back up let me do a quick update on because uh, i have to do my chores you know me there is a little bit of selling going on so this dude here because some of you haven't seen it and you're not aware um, i just want to talk about it because this is going to be something for the future for other things as well um this is the hand painted g frame uh it's about one two hundred uh it's bandai's it's a robot there's no head or arms so it looks a little weird it's just the legs and torso right now um, but what I'm doing is I'm hand painting this um, in kind of an illustration box art style um, and then doing some it's a very different look. So it's not historical. It's not accurate. The robot itself was red for the mobile suit as it is. It's the Sazabi. Uh, it's the same robot that's on the cover of SM3. It's this dude right here. It's his original look. He's the main bad guy. If you guys don't know, he's like kind of the Darth Vader of the series, if that makes sense. Um, so you've got a big red giant suit. A mobile suit robot thing he flies around but what i'm doing is i'm, I'm kind of painting this in in my old design days in uh car design concept design stuff like this uh, when you do an illustration or a rendering or a sketch if you will oftentimes you'll just put the pop of color just where you kind of want the thing to be and we see this a little bit um in older 80s and 90s box art especially the japanese did this a lot in terms of like a tank drawing or painting or old school bandai box art if you looked at it you'll see the focal area has a real density of color a true saturation of the color and then as you vignette out the colors dissipate and they desaturate out as you kind of go to the edges of the of the window or the portal or whatever it is you look usually a 2d thing usually for two-dimensional stuff but in the 3d world i thought this would be kind of an interesting challenge to see if i could kind of pull this off to where in one view it really does have that flavor where if i put this in a graphic take a picture of it, put some text and put a graphic and kind of replicate that look. I can pull that off. But as you rotate around, what happens? So what I'm doing is I'm fading out the paint in kind of a three dimensional view so that this is the backside, even though you're going to see it sometimes, it's actually away from the viewer most of the time. So um, that's all going on right now. It's actually a lot of fun. It's been one of the more enjoyable projects I've done in a long, long time. Um, but I have plans for that and some other stuff. And let me just pull in the Mechatro dude, because this is I did a little bit of work from Friday. So Friday was a stream on this guy. Um, I did a little bit more work because the oil palette was out. Uh, I was sick as a dog. Like I got worse on Saturday and Sunday. Um, just did like a bad sinus cold. No COVID, but um, or at least all the tests I had said I didn't have it. But just kind of a bad sinus cold. Maybe allergies. I don't know. Um, Portland is a big allergy city, even though I don't knowingly have any allergies that I'm aware of. But it was just shitty, you know. So cameras off, just head down, oil palette, some brushes, some music, uh, and some medicine. Um, but I, I added a lot more rust uh, to the Mechatro, um, doing a bunch of stuff with him. Uh, I've got a plan for this guy, and we'll talk about the next time we rotate through, uh, probably three, four more weeks on this guy. But I've, I put the arm back on. Uh, we did the arm on the stream about episode 57, I think, and then 61 was the one we did last week on this guy. So this is all additive. Everything you see here is all additive. And I did. I also added the number on this chest. Uh, just a simple little tape mask, number four. Um, but everything you see here is additive. So there's no there's no chipping, no hairspray, no nothing. It's all oil paints on top of oil paints on top of oil paints. So that dude's come along pretty cool. Having a good time with him. All right, that kind of catches me up. I haven't done anything with armor on Patreon in the last week or so. I think I did a little bit of a T72 video. That's up, I'll leave it over there for now. But we'll get back to this. Get back to the focus of the of the show. Um, <clears throat> Frederick, hello. How are you, sir? Uh, Zal asks, would I would you attempt any anime comics now? It's a little. It's kind of what's going on. Uh, in terms of the what is currently called the anime style, probably not. It's not my jam. You know, I know what you're talking about in terms of of that look, but it's it's. I've looked at it. I've studied it. There's a lot of people that have done it so far. Some of it's pretty cool. Um, and they have the same situation too, where as, as you preset that style painting onto a, a, a project, it's set from a certain camera angle, even in animation, it's set at a certain camera angle. And then as you, as you, as you freeze that and then rotate it like the matrix, what happens to those lines? Because those are all reflection lines. Those are supposed to move as the reflections move. Because the light source changes, you know, as you, as you, that moves. And so that's all supposed to change, but it kind of doesn't. So how does that work in a three-dimensional world? It's an interesting little sidebar conversation, uh, which I'm finding pretty enjoyable. 
Yeah, it was the only it, the only thing I could do, Jim. I couldn't watch TV. I couldn't really, um, you know, I don't play video games or anything like that. So I couldn't really do anything other than sleep. And, you know, what I mean, like even taking a walk, it was the worst weather. And then I had to get healthy for Mother's Day. So I kind of, <clears throat> yeah, just painted. It's pretty low key. It's not that big a deal. You know, you're just kind of sitting here super chill. It's not like I'm painting a big canvas and I'm all over the place. I'm just like, just hanging out. Yeah, I put the other tail plane on the other day, so it's good. I'm missing one of the propellers, though. So I have three of the four prop blades that broke off in transit, and I don't know where number four is, so I'm probably going to have to make up a, a propeller blade. I do have the tail wheel. Um, I can probably take this dude off here. Hold on. It's a simple little rubber band holding it down. Yeah, that's the other thing, too, with the aircraft. When you get to the final paint stages and stuff, like how do you touch it? How do you handle this? All that kind of stuff. Or have I had a lot of problems with the with the process I was using before, so I had to do some repair work. Um, but let's flip this guy over so we can see. Take a look. Lost a little bit of the weathering, but we're going to redo some of that stuff. Let me get on camera here. Okay, so as as you know, most of the time, when you, when you get an older kit, this is a 25-year-old Academy kit. Um, the gear doors are never meant to be closed on this bird. It's always meant to be shown open. So none of this fits really well. And I wasn't going to fix it. I'm not going to try to fix it. All I did was I boxed in the gears uh, underneath with some styrene just so the gears sit flush, the, the door sit flush. Um, and then I did just kind of the best I could. Just kind of fit it in there. Best. There's a bunch of gaps and stuff and I wasn't going to get into filling them and all that kind of stuff. Uh, quick spray of primer and then resprayed the sky. Um, as you can see, the, the 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 handling of it on the base and the holding thing, it keeps getting nicked and stuff. So I'm just going to use that for kind of the wear and tear. Um, and then what I did was I had to use what I had because in the moment, I don't have any decals or anything for British aircraft, any RAF stuff. So I've got some older. This is actually 30 second scale. <laughs> Somebody gave this to me some way back. I think DN models had sent me some sample stuff. Um, I probably planned a 30 second scale Tempest when that, um, who did that? Was it Airfix did the 30 second scale Tempest? I think it was 30. I don't think it was, they did 24 to 30, did 24, 30, I forget. The big kit temp or Typhoon or whatever came out. Uh, I've had these for a while. So I use the smaller sizes. They kind of worked out okay uh, for the wings. I think I'm fine with the size. It's two up and two down. Um, and maybe Chris rolls through later today. Uh, Lou Fran, it'd be cool to see him. Um, I did find the canopy and all the other stuff, so we're going to be able to put that not today, but we'll get that on there. So it'll be, you know, an in-flight mode. Uh, I got to find myself a little pilot figure somewhere. Um, yeah, just from the last episode that you saw, what I've done now is, so this was three weeks old. So the paint job itself is, is now at three weeks and we'll do some today. Uh, it's a matte painted surface. It's Mission Models paints over Mission Models primer, just as a refresh. And then what I had done here is this is just water chipping. No hairspray, no nothing. The colors underneath are the colors that the model was before. Now, typically, probably what you'd want to do is do an aluminum and or a silver or a light gray and then a, a zinc chromate. So you'd have the layered primers coming through properly. So this is just kind of for technique more than actual. It's not black underneath the tempest, of course. Um, so I'm not trying to show that, but that's what, those were the colors that were underneath. Um, but I'm just using that as kind of the underlay, but what you see in here and, and what we're going to do, this is going to, uh, and we'll get to the reference photos here real quick. Um, but what you see, and you can see it on this wing root over here is when you start to rub and burnish this paint, when you burnish a matte surface, when you, when you're scrubbing and, and playing with it like this, in this manner, uh, without varnishes and stuff, trying to get the light to catch that. Hold on. There it goes. So you'll see the differences in the sheens between the mats and the polished uh, paint that happens on real aircraft. So the wing roots in particular, again, this is just rubbing with water. This is the erasability. This paint was three weeks old. And so it had just that perfect amount of resistance. So we talk about um, how long does the mission paint erase with the water and all that stuff. This is three weeks old. Um, the markings are new. So I didn't do anything on the markings. They were still a little too fresh. And I don't really, not a big fan of sanded markings. Uh, most British aircraft that I've seen in all my reference books, even the old beat up typhoons and the Tempest that have been in wartime, all the markings look almost perfect. So my guess is that's a that's a hardcore gloss enamel that they're using back in the war. You know, British paints back in the war. All the markings are perfect. And I even had a, I had a little bit of a hiccup with the, with the stuff. You can see kind of just testing out some of the, the, the chipping on that just to see what would happen, what it would look like. 
<clears throat> um, and so then I got those on. So the decals, so this is gonna be a little bit of the where you guys are like scratching your head or whatever it is, but this is the sheet I use. It's a micro scale sheet, uh, only because it had the kind of the, the style I was looking for. I didn't have anything else. I wouldn't do this normally, but you can see by the, there's no copyright. <laughs> That's an old stamp, 72 dash. This is the 26th one, and it was two bucks back in the day. <laughs> so I'm gonna say this is probably 1983 or 1991 or something like that. This sheet I've had in my collection for a long time. There's no copyrights anywhere. It's, uh, they even tell you, where, where's their manufactured by Craftsville Industries. Never knew that. Santa Ana, California. But it's pretty old. So the thing with an old decal sheet, even though it wasn't yellowed, it had been in storage and cleaned with whatever, what you're dealing with is really old glue. And so I had a couple little hiccups, nothing major. And again, it's not a contest build, but it's a good conversation piece. Uh, I left it on there just for shits and giggles. Most of you guys with new decals will never have this issue. Um, and I don't know if how well you can see, there's just a little bit of, there's a, there's a touch of silvering occasionally. Uh, it's been matte coated and we'll talk about that here in a sec. Um, this one over here, so it was about 11 p.m. last night. I ran out of gas. I put down, I'm using Microset and Microsol. It's a microscale decal, so it all worked fine. Uh, right on the Mission Models raw paint. So a lot of you guys that have written in or talked about, hey, I put down Microset on my Mission paint and it started coming off. Uh, one of the things that I think we need to talk about a little bit is that you have to understand and respect that this paint needs a little bit of time to cure. And if you're going to paint and decal on the same day with the Mission Models paint with alcohol added into it, you're probably gonna have some problems when you start adding on a microset or microsol onto the surface of wet surface because it does react a little bit, it can. But you can see, and you can see right up in here, there's a little bit of silvering going on. It's not too bad. When I get the panel lines and stuff in there, a lot of that will disappear. When I do the oils and the weather, and I can, I can manage that. I'm not super upset about that. Uh, part of this was experimental. One, I wanted to see how good these decals actually work because there's some really nice stuff on here. There's some great numbers and all sorts of great, I'm like, wow, that's really cool. But you can't really tell, like you don't see the film. It's it's got. I've cut through the panel lines with the with the knife for in preparation. But once I matte coated it, um, and I just matted just over the decal area only. I didn't do anything else. Didn't didn't put anything before. There's no varnishes down below. There's no gloss. There's no nothing from whatever. Just straight paint, raw matte paint. Slap the decals down. You guys are probably freaking out. <laughs> Now, I know my boys like Will Pattison and this stuff, they don't have a problem with that. But a lot of you that are used to normal aircraft decaling and everything else you go through, um, the step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step process. Um, what I wanted to do was cut through that a little bit. I've done decaling on matte surfaces for years. Uh, never, ever really had a problem. Um, if I've had a problem, uh, it's usually because the product I'm using in terms of the decal quality itself is shitty. And in this case, these are pretty old. In fact, the first couple went down so well, I couldn't adjust it in position, so it was crooked. <laughs> so I had to peel it off. I couldn't get it to move. Like it went down, it's like, Rip. and that's because the one thing that there is an advantage of the gloss, if it is something you prefer, is you have a little bit more move movability or you know positionability. So you have to be a little bit more accurate. But the beauty of the reason I'm doing this way is because I'm not losing any surface detail by building up varnishes upon varnishes to do all this. Um, it's a thin layer of paint. It's a very thin decal. Um, and then it's a little dusting of a matte varnish on top just to kind of, um, if that camera will actually F and focus on the plane. Hold on, check them over. There's some chips and scratches on it. The paint job's terrible. Like the actual surface details or stuff. This model is like, I was looking, I was like, oh man, it's, it's not bad. It's not good. Um, so yeah, but you can see that there. It's pretty good. Uh, so that was done. I've got the oils ready for that. My matte coat for this time, and I'm actually forgot how nice this stuff is. It's I know a couple of you swear by this stuff too. Uh, I know a couple of my railroad boys use this a lot on the diecast world. Um, I used AK's Ultra Matte. So part of that is because I wanted also to see to ensure that there's brand um, workability between the two because I struggle a little bit with the Mission Model Flat Clear. Like it doesn't go down flat, like dead matte. You, AK's Ultra Matte, when you spray it down, like it goes dead flat immediately. And I, and I just can't get that with a lot of, even to me, a flat with the X22 and stuff, the L and some of the stuff you guys were doing. Um, but this stuff is so forgiving. 
uh, I, I I would recommend it if you've never used it before. It's mine bottles and my bottles ancient. Usually old. This is probably eight to ten years old. Usually old flat coats because the talc inside usually got talcum powder. That's usually what the talc is what they use to dead dead stuff up. Um, tends to not last the longest. So that's the fact that that's all working well. Uh, I was happy with that. And I've noticed it before. I've used it on other little things uh, when I need a spritz of dead flat. Boom done. Boom done. Sometimes you need a satin. That's totally cool. Uh, and I don't mind that, but but every now and then. So that's the simplicity of my decal operation really was um, the, tr the crux of it. What I believe is depending on the brand that you use. And I have my Gunzi somewhere. If you're using Japanese decals, I recommend at least Gunzi or Tamiya's uh, versions of this. Um, but everything else, Cart uh, Cartograph, Microsol, I mean, uh, Microscale, sorry. Um, the Microset, Microsol works fine uh, with acrylic paint jobs. Uh, and the key to this is just let this set up for a little bit. I'd give it a, you know, before you decal. Uh, conservatively, I'd say a week. You could probably push this in a day or two. But if you're noticing, um, I'd recommend with missions and kind of the, the, the curing elements to it. If you're going to lay down some stuff, if you're not a good decaler and you have some problems or whatever, just go slow, pick a small spot to test. I didn't have any problems at all. This went down perfectly. I was in, you know, six hours in, super tired, but I had no problems with that. So in terms of putting the decal, everything else you see is a spray mask. So I, I sprayed the white. Uh, in terms of process, because it's it's not something I could show. It's not something I wanted to show. But what I'm doing is I sprayed the decal white. Uh, it was a mass circle white, taped it off, uh, sprayed a spritz of red in the middle, slapped down the circle on top of that to cover the red, and then sprayed the rest in blue. So there's white underneath that to get that to level up and pop properly. Um, same thing over here. This one was a lot harder because I didn't have quite the right circles and the circles I had were kind of crooked. <laughs> no offense to my boy at small scale, but these are these are designed for armor for, for disc camo, but it's, it's nice because it's a three mil, a four mil and a five mil circle. But you can kind of see they're a little they're a little crooked, like slightly oblong. This is a hint smidge. And when you're doing a, a British marking, you need perfection and it wasn't. <laughs> So it's it's not a Montez Mac, not Montex Max. So I apologize for that, but it's good enough for what we're doing. Um, it got it got the it convinces you that it's British. That's all I needed. That's all I needed to be done. Am I breaking up again? Are you mic check? Are you guys not hearing me? Is this is rollout commander saying it's all messed up again? Oh, fuck me. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, guys. Somewhere along the line, the input switched to the AirPods. Mic check. Should be this mic. Roll out. Can you hear me now? Sorry, guys. Sometimes I've noticed that when you pop the Air AirPods on, it'll take over the whole iMac. Now, why do I have, oh, fuck me. Now I've got my iTunes playing. Hold on. Cause I double tap the AirPods. Can you guys hear, sis you guys hear music? <laughs> oh, I'm so messed up. Oh, it's driving me insane. All right. All right, so I'm getting music in the background. Hold on here. How's that? Spotify quick event. Oops, stop shaking. All right, hold on. Put that. Okay. Do one more mic check. Everybody good? Sounds good. Thanks, Tommy. Paul, sounds good. No music. Do you hear the little background music? The like the looped music. Because I got that turned down a little bit lower too. Just because some guys don't like it. We'll fix the music here in a couple of things. I'm investigating new music resources, uh, but I have to pay for some stuff. So I haven't quite figured out what I wanted to do. AirPods are good. I'm just checking my settings. Settings are good. Output. Okay. Sorry, guys. Just double checking. Okay. Comments. Okay. Did I lose? Hold on here. Why did I lose all the comments? There it goes. All right, hold on. Okay. Hold on, just checking. Thank you, guys. Uh, is that good? Roll out. Okay, thank you. Just the stream music is all I can hear. Okay, Tommy. 
Are we back? I think I'm back. It sounds okay here. I triple checked everything. Hello, Bernardo. I see you, sir. How is Argentina doing? CT Lens 303 5x5. Five five. Okay. You can hear you, but every 30 seconds. Of... Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. And we got you scored away, Jeff. Are you good on Patreon? You, you're all scored away, brother. Like that was good. I know we talked last night, but it was late and I was I was crashing hard. Um, okay. Okay, guys. Thank you. Okay. I think that fixed it. What it was, was the, the AirPods was jumping between the mic here and the mic in front of me. And when it goes to this mic, it sounds like shit. Okay. All right. We're good. All right. Sorry about that. Okay. Back to action. Was there any questions of what I'm doing with the decals? It's actually really simple. Like I don't do anything. <laughs> it's truthful. Like there's nothing, nothing going on here. I'm um, putting the decal straight on the matte surface. And then I'm using a lot of micro set to get that decal down. Um, and then I'm using probably minimum five, six layers of microsol on top. Let that go through its process. I like, I let these set up overnight to dry and then I matte coat on them this morning with, with this. And it was just, the only matte coat is here. Everything else is raw paint. That makes sense. So I'm only dusting on the matte after the fact. There's no gloss, there's no satin, there's no burnishing underneath. And it was kind of a test run a little bit just to push the conversation. Um, and outside of the decals being ancient, I think everything went fine. So on a new fresh set of decals or something where the glue is probably a little bit nicer um, and, the, and it's probably that it's not so plasticky, you know, that this is this is probably dried out a little bit, if you know what I mean. The elasticity of the of the decal sheet itself is probably starting to crap out. Which is fine. I expected that. But they're going to be a good set of decals for other stuff, too. If I need something and they're easy to chip. So if I need a broken up decal, it's a good one to use. Okay, everybody good? We all back? Decal straight on the mat, Bernardo. No gloss for the void silver. And yep, that's what I'm talking about, guys. Like, listen, when I'm that's what I'm saying is that there's nothing here. This is literally decal straight on a matte surface. And I do this all the time. This is not something new. This is not something I just don't talk about it because the aircraft aircraft world in particular, this and now this looks like shit because the surface of the model is terrible, but the actual decal is fine. It's a little bit nicer. I don't know what I did over here. It's a mess. There's a lot of tape glue I had too, as well, some residual stuff. I had one little minor issue up here, and that's because I did two layers of Microsoft and then I went to bed. So when you do this process with the mats in particular, if this is something you want to try, because I'm not telling you to try it, because I know most you just can't, you just like, I can't do that. Um, and I understand that. I'm not trying to tell you what to do and all that kind of stuff, but it's possible. I'm telling you it's possible. So yeah, decal straight on the matte surface, microset, microsol, and a little dust of just in the in the matte varnish on top. So so we're clear with varnishes. The purpose of the matte is not protection per se. That's a way down the list of what's happening here. The purpose of the matte on top of this to, is to relevel the surface because you have now put stickers on top, so you have an edge to deal with. Now these are really thin; they're nice, but if you put you know Hasegawa or Tamiya decals, you know you got some thickness there. So you got to get rid of that. And the only way to get rid of this is through the, is through the setting solutions. So you got to use those up and you got to be patient with that. You got to take your time. A lot of you either rush that or you don't do enough of it. Um, and this is like, this was only two levels of, of the Microsol. And you can see I got a little bit of after it dried. So I didn't quite hunker it down enough because the Microsol will dissolve that sheet and conform that over to whatever's underneath. It'll work. Um, especially if you have enough underneath and the trick to this is the, getting the micro set and microsol kind of under the decal, get that on there, dry it up, seal it down with the Q-tip, get it all pressed down nicely and just keep doing that process over and over and over again. Um, five or six times on the microsol, kind of just dab it on there. And if you see anything happening in the paint where it's just kind of, it's a matte paint, you're getting some liquid, it's going to leave a tide mark. It can do that. Then what I do is I will brush that, that microsol around the whole square or the whole panel line. So it goes panel line to panel line. That prevents any kind of like weird discolorations that could happen. Uh, it does occasionally, but overall you can see it came out pretty good. I've already done some chipping and some rubbing in there. Um, all the wear and tear you see, I did that last night as well. And we'll do a little bit more today. And I'll just kind of show you the process, but that's basically it. Um, I just cut close Carlos. I don't cut, I don't trim it out perfectly. Um, I cut close enough. There's not a lot. There was, I probably could have cut a little tighter truth be told. Um, you can, would you suggest 24 to 40 hours MMP for longer, Paul, I'd probably go maybe I 
probably two to three days, four days. I'm thinking that's the, the sweet spot, Paul. And I haven't done, like, I should probably set up a test of decaling, you know, the day of, 24 hours later. This paint job is three weeks old. So I think that was part of the reasons I have no problems. And then I think some of you that have had problems with this in terms of adding the liquid to the surface, the water and the microset to the paint, it affects it is because the paint hasn't set up enough. That seems, seems to be my interpretation if you're struggling. Otherwise, it's fine. Like I had no problems. I mean, it's I mean, it's tight as 172nd can be. Uh, and we'll get to the oils here in a second. I got the whole palette set up and everything. Um, Rolling Thunder model is checking in. Okay, everybody, wait, do we, how many is, oh, it's a roll out Thunder. Roll, <laughs> dude, you guys with the names are killing me. Smalls, I can't keep up. <laughs> um, yeah, in most, in, and that's what Corey's saying is, is what, what, at least in micro scale conversation, it's designed to, to dissolve away. They actually tell you in the instructions, just cut it out, don't trim it down. And that'll all come out and it does, it disappears. Um, it fully disappears. You don't see the film on that at all. It, it's fully disappeared. So it's beautiful in terms of like, you know, just straight up old school decaling. Um, but yeah, Paul, I'd say, you know, back to your question, you know, two, three, four days, you know, a week, week or two, longer is better. You know, if you're in a hurry for a contest, you know, try to try to time manage that out a little bit. Uh, totally, amazing. you're fine, Jeff. I, I don't mind that at all. I was going to give you a bad time, Jeff, today, but no, you're fine, dude. The support's awesome, so I appreciate it. Um, control, let me not fix this. <laughs> bad, you're funny. Um, okay, we're good. Okay, nice. I'm sipping whiskey. We'll cure. Yeah, no shit, Robert. I do need a drink. All right. We good? I think I'm good. Let's do a little reference first, and we'll get into this. Just because I want to kind of touch base with you guys what we're doing. Uh, where we're going and now that i've got the model to the point where i can actually we can interact with it a little bit more um it's episode 59 it just was all painting it was just putting down all the the camo um, yeah there's also sanding too i did a little bit of 3000 just to see what would happen um i agree sanding works it's a it's a tough it's a delicate situation uh, it's a removal process, so sometimes if, if you get one swipe too many, it's one swipe too many. There's that problem too. And I was like, yeah, I backed off a little bit. I'm like, oh, I don't know. They're pretty old decals. I'm like, I don't know how these are going to hold up. So this is one of my favorite picks in the in the uh, famous airplanes of the world. This is the Typhoon Tempest book. Um, and we, we're going to do some. So what we're going to start with today, to re it just reminds me is I need to get the wing walks marked down and I think I can airbrush some exhaust for you guys today to start and then we'll do some oils. Um, but as you can see on a, on a worn bird immediately, and this is what I'm talking, and this is throughout the whole book, the roundels on British aircraft, even when the stuff beat the shit, it's like, I mean, I know it's black and white. I understand that we're not seeing the color variations a little bit. There's a little bit of that for sure. But truth be told is these things are damn near perfect. And I'm guessing it's because you know, really hardcore enamel paint and they take a lot of pride in, you know, the Brits, Take a lot of pride in their markings. They'll put it down properly. They ain't going to F around with that stuff. So these markings tend to be on a, most of the British aircraft when you go through this stuff. Pretty solid. Maybe Southeast Asia birds. You know, this is Europe. I mean, again, the markings are you know, they're, they're literally decal perfect half the time. Um, let's see if I can. I think the Typhoon's, the, the heavily worn stuff's in the back. Hold on here. Um, yeah, because even here, when you when you look at this guy... It's another good reference point. And this one, somebody missing a spot? <laughs> that looks weird to me. Um, but you can see with just even the wing roots all worn to shit, just like this. And even this this whole patch panel here, probably for the exhaust. Um, this obviously a P for prototype testing, they're doing all sorts of stuff. It's got something on the wing, some sort of device here to test. Um, but you can see too, you know, markings are, are holding up well. I'm guessing there's something wrong with the colors on that one. Unless they went, did they go with a red outline on some of these? There's some interesting black and white footage of the British roundels. You're like, wait, did the color change? What are you doing? I think some of these are color reverse. Some of the films that they're using are a little bit, they've switched them around a little bit sometimes. I'm trying to find some stuff here. Hold on. Uh, another good juicy ref photo. Um, this is kind of going to be where we're at with the look. 
um, you know, kind of got the white spinner. You can see the spinner's not really chewed up at all, um, but we're gonna get a nice kind of uh, exhaust kind of flow through there. And then some kind of the horizontal gradations and stuff like that. We're gonna be able to do a little bit of that today. Um, you know, here's the belly shot. I mean, you literally can't even see the gear doors. You know, that's how tight some of this stuff is. Laminar flow wing, you know, these are, Tempest is perfect. You know, it's one of those birds that when they built this thing, this is a, this is, you know, 500 mile an hour, 500 mile an hour aircraft, which is insane. <laughs> when you stop and think about that for like, wait, what? Now it'll do like 450 level, but I mean, in a dive, that thing's pushing Mach 1, you know, all that. Because most of the Typhoons and Tempest were the ones they were doing the dives for the kind of the early low, the high Mach numbers. They were testing that out in the flutter and the reverse aileron control and all that stuff. There's a little bit of stuff happening. And I debated putting stripes and all that stuff, but we did. And I effed up the stripe. The stripe's supposed to cover some of the fin. And I, I, was, a, I was a wee bit shy, so I didn't check my references. Um, so we're just looking at some pics real quick, guys, just to kind of just go through some stuff. Um, this one's good, too. You know, kind of up in here. We're going to put the wing rocks to get a little exhaust going here. Just got a nice soft roll off. Rob, R-O-B. It was funny because I was going through the numbers and or the letters and some of the stuff was like I put a C. I was going to do CRW because it just sounded like nice. I'm like, wait, that's a company name. And then I was like, WRX. I'm like, I can't do that. That's like a Subaru. Like I was doing all these codes and then when I, I had BRA for bra. I'm like, and then BRO for bro. I'm like, I can't. So I and then I got the GB for GBR and it's like Great Britain. I'm like, OK, I was going to do RSP, but I screwed up the S right away. The S broke on me. Um, yeah, so just kind of looking, I'm just, what I'm doing is just kind of looking at what we're gauging as you can see the wing walks take a good beating. Um, the exhaust somewhat, you get a little bit of wear and tear in the upper part of the fuselage up in here, even though it's a Typhoon, it's the same, it's the same, 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 but different. Um, you get a little bit of, of kind of discoloration through the, through the markings. And, and one thing I like here uh, that we're going to talk about when I get to the weather and we get into the hardcore daily stuff and we get in my nose down and we're doing this, we'll talk a lot about color across various colors and there's weathering across different shades you go from the, the the medium sea gray and the green the earth green and the earth brown and the green and whatever the, the whatever the tones are uh, across the blue and the red and all that kind of stuff and what happens in black and white you can kind of see through it so you can kind of see what's going on but you have to adjust things as you go across colors that's another big you know talking point if you will another topic to discuss you can see it a little bit back over here some of it's in the film but we are seeing some of the light in, in the in the you're seeing a little bit of the discoloration as it's going around this. So let me just see if there's now oh, there's a great shot of just kind of a mess on top of a fuel tank. Here's a good one too, a great exhaust one too. Uh, another thing I learned too, just kind of studying some stuff as I'm getting familiar with the subject, is sometimes on the right side of the fuselage, they will reverse the order of the letters so that the, the double letter is always in the front going towards the front of the aircraft. So on the other side of the aircraft, the SA will be on the back side because it's it's that's how they did that sometimes. And what I mean by that was it was confusing to me at first. I'm like, wait, is the, is the photo reversed? Like, what's happening? See how here you've got the double letters behind the roundel and then over... Here you've got them in the front. So there's a little bit of the, you know, playing that out and figuring out which style to use because it seems to change depending on the unit and how they applied it. So I'm guessing some of that's interpretation in the field. And there's a shiny bird for all those you like a gloss. There you go. Um, but this was also a really nice one too, just to refresh. This is gonna be, I really like, so what I'm doing is so what I do is I'll pick from reference photos. I'll pick a section for certain areas of the plane because I kind of mix and match things. So like the top of the wings where we were talking about the colors just now, I'll use that photo. From For this one here, I really like the discoloration we saw through here. Just kind of in that section of the side of the fuselage right there. You can see it. I missed it. I missed the fin. Eh. Pisses me off. I'm like, damn it. <clears throat> Do not airbrush with Vallejo. Vallejo's fine, dude. You probably don't have the right thinner. There's one of the thinners you want to get is... Um, I don't know, 71.161 is the newer thinner. That's the code. Uh, another good shot here of the upper surfaces. Uh, you can see the walkway is literally rubbed off with the boots and stuff. Um, so yeah, all right. This guy's banging away with a hammer. So they're not all perfect. Uh, it's an important question because I struggle right now uh, doing a camo with my airbrush, chemist modeler ass. Can I use Vallejo retarder 
with Tamiya XF paints, uh, I can't get fine lines. I tried all thinning ratios. So let's back this up a second. Uh, there you are, Chris. Good to see you, brother. I'm going to need you later. Hang around, man. Um, yeah, that's my answer. Chris just answered you. Uh, Lufram just answered you, Chemist Mahler. If you're putting Vallejo into Tamiya and it's not working, then don't. Uh, not to be a dick, but just don't mix brands like that. I don't recommend. I know sometimes you can cheat that, especially with um, um, Mr. Color Leveling Thinner. You can cheat that a little bit across some brands. I know it can do its thing. I understand that. I'm not a fan of mixing brands up too much. Uh, if you're trying to thin, to me, XF paints to spray good, use lacquer thinner. That'll be your most, that'll be the best experience you can have. I don't spray lacquer, so I don't do it anymore. Um, but you can, it does it does the job perfectly. I mean, don't get me wrong. It works like a treat. Um, there's no reason you should be putting Vallejo Retarder in to me XF paints, to be honest with you. One's an acrylic lacquer. The other one's a, a vinyl acrylic. They're literally two different chemical types. So just chemist Mahler. <laughs> this is the irony is not lost on me. I don't, I'm not really sure. I think you're getting too chemistry with that. Back it off. Just go get some to me a lacquer, uh, lacquer thinner and you'll be fine. You can spray whatever you want to spray. All right. Ah, got to stretch, got to warm up tight. <clears throat> Working out. Um, Zal, Southeast Asia British birds are spot on together. Yeah, they're, they're they're great sources. It's one of the more limited resources I have. I don't have a ton of SEA um, aircraft books. They they weren't well photo. They were not well photographed, or the few publications that are around I don't have. So Paul says he tried to decal on MMP, no poly. The next day, and the paint came up in the future. Yeah, that's kind of my thought. Is is Paul is push your push your point through towards. So to the overall conversation with mission models, paints, and decaling, be patient. I think the thing is you, you go too fast and, and under normal lacquer conversations, that's possible. It's fine. But I believe with this paint, just because the way it works, especially with water, because water is involved in the decaling and water does rub off the paint. All this chipping's with water. So I'm scrubbing it with the brush and water. We'll, we'll get into that. And I'll show you. I'll get the, we'll get the wing walks down and you'll see with with the time uh that it's so soon the chipping's not going to go very well i already know it's not going to go very well but i know in a, in a week or so i can really get that you know the chipping of, of that to work beautifully so the results are it's a risk reward chipping reductive reducing abrasive sanding all this stuff that we talk about chemical wear and tear thinner is pulling stuff off everything's risk reward so just maintain that in terms of it's a crap shoot you're, you're playing in vegas it's not a hard and fast rule. There's going to be times when shit goes sideways. Truth be told. All right, let me mount my little dude back up on the thingy here. Because I need him on his base. Get that little chin spoiler. Okay, what do I do with my rubber bands? Okay. Hey, I had this all figured out last night. Yeah, aircraft modeling is a little, I mean, it's definitely a little bit different in terms of of kind of just how you're gonna, you're gonna go through stuff. So just put one of those there. Get off. Rubber bands, instant ball of fun. Okay, we're gonna put this guy back here. And if you don't move the rubber bands too much, they won't scuff the paint. It's, it's when you move them around and they, they, they jimmy up and stuff is when it kind of gets the paint scuffed. But yeah, chemist modeler, that's going to be the main thing. That if you're having painting problems, and I think this goes after 20 years experience of just everything going on with everybody in the world and in terms of hobby and stuff like that. The crux of the matter is, especially if you're trying to mix brands, because Vallejo paints with Vallejo really well. Those of you that paint with Vallejo, you know that if you use the ratios properly and the retarders and the, the thinners with the paints, it does work really nice. You can get it to work really well. So. Same thing with Tamiya, you know, if you run through the full, and that's how I used to paint, you know, even when I did Mr. Paint from, from Slovakia, when I was doing all that stuff, if you paint with their systems, usually it works fine. The mission model is the same way. I paint purely with the mission model systems and its own airbrush. I almost never have any kind of problems whatsoever. And I was working hard last night. I was doing all sorts of markings. Look at, they all came out beautiful. That's all painted with mission models, paints and, and mass. It's all tape over the paint, nothing lifted. It's a primer situation. I'm always priming. I don't have problems. I mean, I have problems. Don't get me wrong, guys. I have a lot of problems, but that's not one of them. 
So uh, where's my tweezers? Okay. So we get the mask a little bit here. It's always fun. I wanted to get this done beforehand, but oh well. It was it was just it was not enough hours in the day. I'm eyeballing it. I don't really care. If it's off half a mil or a millimeter from the actual, that's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We're good to go. So this is the shape. I do the I do the thin tape first to kind of get the outline, and then I mask off the rest. And I believe one of them went right to that panel line all the way up there. So we're gonna do a long one. We're just gonna do the one side today. I'm not gonna get into double side, the whole thing. But what I do need to do is check if it if it, the if the wing walk goes all the way to the, the edge of the trailing edge. If one of them one of them actually went to that, we'll use that panel line right there. Yeah, sorry about the sound problems earlier, guys. That's unusual. Usually I don't have sound problems. I don't know what happened with that. I put the AirPods in and Puma just kind of just kind of overtook the system. Did I miss any other questions there? Uh, make sure your, your airbrush is clean. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm guessing if you're fighting that, it's it's because of that. Yeah, I, I, I tend to have... It, it means nothing to me as a model builder and having an honest conversation with you guys. It means nothing to me to buy five brands of something to mix together to create some new super solution. It doesn't mean anything to me. Um, and probably because I was trained, the, the car industry in particular, my education is... You know, if you do something with the brand of car that you're working with, they oftentimes go through a whole process of what you're supposed to be doing with it. And when you go out and sometimes you can you can band aid it or use other stuff, and it does does in truth work. You know, like window cleaner will clean out your Tamiya airbrush, no problem. But what I find is so does Tamiya thinner. You know, that whole conversation of I'm more of a purist now. I stopped trying to find either the cheap solution or to save a few dollars. Like I've stopped doing all that. Like it doesn't mean anything to me. So. You know, take that to heart a little bit, but I find if you're going to fight that and you're having problems and you're trying to like do that, what's the end game? Like, why are you trying to get to me to not dry as fast? Because an acrylic lacquer basically, they have their own retarders too, by the way. There's to me a retarder, you throw that in there, it should work fine. So, close enough. <laughs> okay, hold on. So, that's kind of like I've kind of come to that realization over time. And most, and most of you guys know too, okay, it does go to the edge. Most of you guys know as well, um, airbrush per, per brand or chemical type. So uh, if you're using lacquers, you have one for lacquers. If you're using water-based, have one for, for water-based. Make sure that was working. I used the shit out of the airbrush last night and I had no problems. Everything's working good. Knock on metal. Yeah, there you go. So Zal's, Zal's confirmed. That's, that's, that's my main answer to you guys in terms of advice. If you're gonna play the brand conversation up or the chemical type conversation up, the best thing to do is get two or three airbrushes so you've got a pure system to run through. It's when you blend them all together through one tool, you'll eventually fight that. Uh, Cause I've, I've fought that for years. All right, so <clears throat> there's tire black. I think the word, the word. So taking a page from you, Mr. Chris, Mr. Mr. Is it Christoph or Christopher? Anyway, we're calling you Chris. So you put up his little P40 today on Instagram and I was going to do the exhaust today too. And I'd had it in my head to go lean and then a dark stripe in between. I don't know why, but we're going to do Lou Fram. We're going to do your little, we're going to run through and kind of showcase that today. But the wing walk will also be in this color. Now, before I get started, before I ruin everything, I need to mask the rest of this off. <laughs> Hold on. I'm an idiot. Just using all my extra tape from the other day. The last one. I'm always reusing old masking tape for this stuff. <clears throat> I don't know what.
I need to see what I'm doing. Get down there. Um, this tape is pretty low tack. So in case you're wondering about detack tape and all that stuff, uh, usually with the yellow Tamiya tape, the actual Tamiya brand tape, I will detack it on the back of my hand once before I use it. So most of this has been detacked already. So it's pretty, you know, you just seen enough to, to stick. And I've not had any, any paint come up in the last 24 hours at all. So, you know, knock on wood again, but this should be okay. I've got a little gap right there I gotta fill and I went over there too much. So I think what I'm going to do, if I'm planning this out, is use the worn tire black first, because it's a good uh, wing walk color, and it's a good, as, as Lou Fromm showed us today in his P40. And if you don't follow the dude, go follow him, man. This stuff's amazing. I half wanted to have a skull decal, Chris. I'd love to put a shark facer on this guy in kind of a desert kind of deal. Okay, yeah, so just in case you're wondering, DTAC kind of takes a little bit of that adhesive off a little bit. Okay, just in case it's overkill. I'm not going to spray that much. Just because you guys will freak out. I'll cover the cockpit too. Okay. All right. All that for a little bit of gray. <laughs> and then I have to freehand the exhaust on camera. That's not challenging. Because after a while, the paint won't come back. Just pulling the handle, slide it back. Yeah, you're just getting what you're getting, chemist modeler, is you're getting a chemical reaction inside. Uh, the two brands of paint are coagulating. The lacquer is probably breaking down whatever's in the retarder, and it's probably causing the paint to coagulate and gum up in, in a simplistic conversation. Um, um, so Jim asks, what's my thought on hypersonic or ultra? I, I need one. <laughs> I could use one, Jim. If you're giving out Christmas gifts, I could send me an ultrasonic cleaner. Yeah, I'm fine with that stuff. That works good. I used to have one. I, I think mine broke. I had like a cheapy Amazon one. I think it gave up the ghost eventually. Yeah, the Aleutian, the Aleutian uh, Warbirds too are, are also another hot one to, to do. Um, that and, um, and maybe a challenge to you, Chris, because you know, as if you don't have anything better to do with yourself, but I've been dying to do a Catalina. Um, the 70, what is it, Academy 72nd is a really nice kit. I'd love to do one in that. I'd love to do a, just a full blown, um, really nice Aleutian two-tone blue over the, the light gray, um, early war 42 ish Catalina out of Alaska, maybe with the P 38s up there too, as well. I think that whole, what that, I love that side story, world war two. And I love kind of, you know, the, obviously the dissolution of, of the Aleutian islands and Alaska and that climate and that whole conversation, even some of the Japanese birds that went up there, like that's a really great, um, scenario to play with. Um, no room here for cats. <laughs> trying i was just gonna put that out there maybe a seamew or a kingfisher is there a good 70 second kingfisher kit guys is there a nice one i love old kingfishers too i think somebody did a really what is it the 
Seahawk, the last, the late war Curtis Seahawk that kind of looks like a fighter plane. You need a new 48th one? I thought the Ravel Monogram 48 was still pretty, still, it's one of the more impressive of their generation of kits, right? I mean, I guess you could always use a new tool, everything. Wait, what happens with the combination to me is their own non-retarded thinner? Are you talking the X20A? You've got something going on, Chemist. If, if you're putting to me a thinner and to me a paint it's, and it's breaking down, then you've got you've, something else is going on. You've got a chemical in there somewhere, to be truthful. Whether you know it or not or want to, whatever, like don't sweat it. That should never happen. I've never used to me a thinner with their paint and had a problem. I mean, sometimes it doesn't spray super fine camo, like it's a little spotty, but that's, you know, that's half me here to there. That's why the lacquer thinner conversation became so common. Okay. But yeah. I don't need much, but we're going to use it for a dual. And I've got the other color here, tire black one. And then we have worn black gray camo. This is a little more of a brown warm tone. We're going to put that in for the exhaust a little bit. And then on my, on my lean mixture exhaust, I'm going to be throwing down... Um, Another beautiful color, 133, the the pale, the 5P pale, pale gray, which is the, the the navy ship color, really good color. Okay. I need this guy. I need one more of these guys. So just a little thinner in there, and I'll show you this process every single time, every time I can. Emulsify, mix, mix, mix. I'm guessing 20% thinner I threw in there. Probably a little thick. Hmm, it's not too bad. I need a little bit thinner. Yeah, I'll get the music thing handled. I've, I've been trying to look at like paid for royalty free services for music. I just have to figure it out which one I want to do. The Spotify royalty free is a little hit and miss because what you'll get just on the music conversation because you keep hearing the loop and I know even I'm like, okay, enough of that too. I, I'm bored with that. Um, yeah, there's, 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 there's going to be something like that. In, in all the years of airbrushing, if you're using brand on brand, if you have a problem, chances are really good somewhere. In it's either a cleaning issue or a secondary chemical has been introduced somewhere. Uh, it's what led me to, um, because I sprayed with Vallejo, Life Color, Tamiya, Mr. Paint, those four, a little bit of AK Interacted, the old stuff, the original, uh, the original paint, um, all through one airbrush for up until like 2008, 2009-ish. And then I started to buy new airbrushes because I, the, my mind were wearing out. And so I got other ones and then I would use one an older one for primer and other stuff and then a new one for just the thing and i started it started to kind of click that no no just run one th and then i started to solve that problem from a chemical standpoint of just run to me acrylic lacquers gunzi etc mr paint through one airbrush and then take all your vallejo and life color vinyl latex acrylic and run it through one airbrush and then when mission came on board i already knew it's got its own airbrush and i don't put anything else in those airbrushes and i tell you what guys no shit the amount of times I have actual airbrush problems is like almost nothing. And I mean that honestly. So then I started advising that, you know, I know it's a hundred dollar purchase. I get all that, but so is, so is an effing kit, you know, you know, don't buy that kit, kit inject and mold the kits will be around forever. Put it in the air, put it in your tools. You can always buy the kit later. There's only like the dragon white box stuff and a few of those kind of deals that disappear. Trail run. What's up, Anthony? How are you guy? Good to see you, man. Yeah, boys, another one too. Another kind of very interesting sidebar scale modeler who does RC. What scale are you, Anthony? 10th, 12th scale? You do a mix, right? Big scale. Um, does a lot of these really cool old Land Cruises and Toyota Forerunners and stuff like that in the RC world and he scale paints them like we do. And Anthony and I follow each other on Instagram. So give Trail Run RC a follow, guys. He's uh, really good stuff. Really good wear and tear and paint jobs and stuff like that. Does a lot of to me painting too. Yeah, but I don't spray the lacquers anymore for health reasons. Uh, X20A is okay. You know, I think the thing with, we've all noticed with X20A in particular is it's it's the tip dry issue. 
Um, and I and I know uh, air, uh, in that conversation of tip dry is a big deal for a lot of us. Lacquer thinner, it's not as much. Um, and and I will say too, not to def- not to defend or promote the whole thing, but when I switched to mission paint, the one thing I've noticed is the tip dry like they match the lacquers across the board in terms of, of usability, like the tip drying, the, the fine camel lines, all that stuff. You can tune this paint to get that out of it. So Vallejo life color that life color not so much. Vallejo was the challenge of getting the the more refined stuff. Not that it was a problem. It's just it's more of a challenge. You know, it's it's a tougher nut to, to crack. And I've had my issues of the vinyls building up in thicknesses and then fight me and stuff like that too. So it's just a little bit of pain love. Air pressure is way too high. Crank that down. There we go. I mean, all day long, Broham. <laughs> all day long, man. I have no problems with this stuff. So I'm a believer. Are you a believer? What did I watch? I rewatched uh, Altered Carbon. I watched that when I was sick on Netflix. Okay, I'm an idiot, sorry. I think I was up too late last night. So I've got some shipping down already, so I'm gonna kind of build up around this. And because the wing walk's going to get a little beat up, I can kind of spray a little bit shitty. That's that, man. Spend more time with tape and untaping and taping and taping and unmasking. I effing hate this stuff. All you clean builders in the Gundam world too, man. So what do we got here? Jeffrey says, the two problems that are almost universal is paint. That's not mixing brushes that are not clean. Absolutely. Yep, yep. I'm going to quit the airbrushing for today, Chemist. You're good, man. And me, and take this as intent, Chris, uh, Chemist Modeler, is that the advice is designed because, at least from my experience of, you know, d- almost two decades now of just doing all of what we're talking about here is cutting through the bullshit of why that's a problem. I think if there's anything RSP can bring to the table is that I'm, is the clarity of information of that. Okay, we, the reason I say that is because, well, we spent 10 years fighting that like what you're talking about. So the shift to multiple airbrushes and all that stuff is designed so that you don't have problems. Like this kind of stuff, that, I mean, I'm spending my time masking and stuff like that, but like it's not, I'm not in a bad mood. I'm not having air, you know, it's not, and you, that sprayed so money. And I haven't even stripped the airbrush after last night. I've just take, I mean, I pulled the needle and just kind of, you know, quickly, you know, so, oops remember the order I put all this down in. You come up. Watch all the decals, everything pulls up. <laughs> like, ah! No. I'm trying to figure out if I want to put a little pilot dude in this guy too. I'm probably putting too much effort into this model, but you know, truth be told is, is you kind of want to, I want to make sure that this all goes well. There's no rush. You know, I'm not, you know, streaming, streaming boys. We're not going anywhere. I've got a thousand more streams to do. So we got a lot of projects to build, you know, but I want that P61 to come out singing. I want it to come out, you know, looking good and everything and, and be proud of it. This one is just kind of proof of concept because I do a lot of other models. And so I don't do a lot of aircraft, which is why you keep seeing the Corsair and the thumbnail. <laughs> I was doing that shit with Photoshop last night to do the, or yesterday to do my promo. And I got so mad at myself. I'm like, I'm the boss is yelling at me. Like, Dude, why don't you have any other aircraft? <laughs> so if you see the Corsair a lot, I apologize, but we'll get some more stuff in there. Now that this guy's almost weathered up, we'll get some, we'll get some stuff going. First off, that's a great color. I'm a huge fan of, of off black colors. Um, you know, dark grays that are kind of not really like they're black, but they're not. Uh, in terms of the scale model world and what we do and, and, and how that goes, um, you know, boom, done. Nothing, nothing, uh, none of the paint, you know, with the tape, we had no problems. Um, a little crooked in my thing here. Okay. Um, but we got a flipper while the paint's in the airbrush. 
because it's easier to paint the I'm gonna paint the, the the exhaust upside down Chris did you do that too upside down in other words the wings in the way to get that airbrush where you need it to go for exhaust painting so let's see here if I can pull this off yeah because I'm gonna want to okay I think that'll work I'm going to use that white stripe as a sacrificial thing. I think I could probably, hold on, try not to touch this too much. Probably should have gloves at this point in time. Okay. And we just needed to hold it steady so I can get the airbrush. And the wing's going to give you a little bit of a shadow. I'll move that over a little bit for you. Like a band-aid, let's get going. Let me do one tip clean just to make sure. Oh, what did I miss? I missed it. Julian Cavallari, how are you, sir? I had a, had a well-worn Verlinden book and that was it. Oh, what else did I miss? Um, models are so lucky now that there's so many people. Oh, modelers, yeah, we are. Excuse me, got the hiccups. Just catching up on chat. Uh, so, Mike, when you say vinyl, I'm thinking vinyl si siding. That's not the... So, Jim, hobby paints in general, most of them, they use plastic polymers in, in the pigments. It's a man-made process. And by contrast, mission models are organic. They're sourcing theirs from natural materials in terms of the actual pigment grinds. So the cheapest material available to make paint from is latex slash vinyl. It's the same stuff that goes in your house paint. When you see here latex interior paint, it's the same stuff. That's what that is. It's nothing, it's, it's, it's relatable because it's a plastic. And there are obviously a million versions of plastics in various categories, like if you get into all that. So that's what that is. Um, I'm gonna get my head down. I wanna read the chat, but I did. Yeah, one side was upside down. Okay, cool. That's what I thought too, because I'm like, how do you guys paint that unless you're upside down? Need a little more room for the for the maneuvering. All right, cross your fingers. working on the back end of the stroke. The problem is I'm, I, I, okay, I'm gonna, hold on guys. I'm trying to hold the model and do that is more of the challenge, but we're gonna see if we can kinda, you're gonna kinda not see this, so I apologize. I can't ever see that. There we go. Oh, I did okay. <laughs> I was like, wait. Yeah, I'm lifting off. Okay, that's not too bad. I can clean a little bit of that up. A little bit of spots in there, but we're going to use that as weathering. That was harder than I thought. I haven't done that in a minute. Getting the right angle and everything is tough. Hold on here. One second. But as you can see, it sprayed fine. I just was kind of a little bit on the clumsy side. What I want to do, though, is I want to get right under that rail too. Hold on. Get that off there. Gotta do some off camera maneuvering. Hold on boys. Mm. 
Do I get brownie points for that? <laughs> Airbrushing on camera, uh, the exhaust stains. That's that's a thing. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna have to do this twice. in your face. <laughs> Chris, you don't do that with the cameras in there, <laughs> right? You're not doing this with all the cameras and stuff. Now, you should start a channel, bro, because I would I would be down for that. Okay. Now, with the wing in the way, now I'm going to go the other way. Hold on. I just want a little bit under that exhaust to kind of flesh up that shape. Do a little bit of a jog. The only problem with this Academy kit is there's not a lot of the like modern surface detail. Just give him a little bit of a jog in there. Get a little bit of a... Like the, the, the detail is really beautiful. It's actually really crisp, but there's like missing all the, you know, the Jimmy jigs, Jimmy rigs, Jimmy jams. Okay. It's a little straight. It should taper off a little bit more, but maybe I can do that with the next color. All right, so color swap. Get that out of my face. You guys take a take a take a minute to have a smoke. <laughs> that's always that's a little that's a little pressure right there. That was that was a little fourth quarter action. I needed to score. I need to get some points on the board, right? <clears throat> No, Jeff, they're not, by the way. But you guys are fun, so. Okay, where's my little, okay, to clean an airbrush with this, another beautiful thing, uh, little water bottle spritzer. Just dump that out. I got a little, <laughs> not on the floor, I got a little, little cup over here. <clears throat> that actually went smoother than I, than I anticipated. But we're gonna do the lean mixture, a la Mr. Lufram, Lufram. Where is my Q-tips? Why not have? Did I drop it? Oh, I'm dropping stuff. All right, I got more. I got plenty. Hold on, I need to clean it. We're getting in the groove now. Yeah, we're getting in the in the groove. I always need a little warm up. You guys know that. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's always like that phase of the first half hour. <laughs> it's just like, hold on a sec. This out of here. But from a from a point, so again, I think I mentioned this last time. I forget what stream if it the week, was the last week or the week before. Um, as a price value conversation, um, I know some of you really like your microns and stuff like that. But this point two to me, super super fine. Not to sell it, but with the adjustable handle here, you know, for the for the ins and outs, and then the the, the back valve point two. Parts are readily available. I think the needle's 15 and the nozzle's 15 or 16. So for 30 bucks repair, you can keep this updated for a couple years easily. Yeah, just just BTW. So it's a good it's a good one. And I probably could have thinned that down a little more. So I think what we'll do is we'll make a little bit of a on the sky camo. And I was probably running maybe nine to ten psi with that in terms of the Mac valve. It's set at 15. Um, let me open this all the way back up. So I had a full turn. So I'm guessing we'll go with that. We'll say nine to 10 PSI was probably what I was spraying that the, the um, exhaust at. Sorry. Okay. Uh, what was the color? We're gonna use this guy, Slate Gray. What's up, Jeff Lamb? How are you, buddy? Flipping the bird. Hold on here, real quick. Okay, 
this off. Turn it back upside down again. Actually worked out okay. I'm just probably handling the model more than you'd, you'd want to, if you know what I mean. But the rubber band system actually works pretty good. Probably should wear gloves and all that stuff too, if I was getting serious. But you know me, I'm not serious all the time anyway. Okay. All right, let me make up the color first. This guy's done. All right, everybody good? I've got plenty of Q-tips now, right? So this again is the U.S. Navy 5P Pale Gray Blue. It's got a little, it's got a, it's a nice kind of cool gray tone. It's, it's probably should be pretty nice for the, for the lean mixture. Obviously don't need a lot. And go a little bit on the over thinned element. Mixing paint. Have you seen the, the Mael Italeri kit? That's the submarine, right, uh, Nero? That is the, the two-man human torpedo. Am I correct on that one? I used to have that kit, I think. Pretty sure I did. I guess that answer is yes. <laughs> yes, I had. Yeah, I want to do subs, too. I do I do need to throw in a naval subject at some point in time. That is true. Um, we're halfway, boys. Don't forget to mash the like button. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, do your chores, guys. Uh, we need to hit the like button. Uh, I need to start getting heavy on the promotions and marketing and grow the channel and all that stuff. So that all does help. It really does because I'm a live stream, so I'm not algorithm friendly. Uh, what did Carlos say? That one live when you taught me taught how to make realistic tires with a dry brush. Um, oh, sweet. You're welcome. Yeah, it's a good one. Go light to dark. <laughs> it's my name of my channel, light to dark. <clears throat> okay, let's see if we can pull this off again. Uh, let's... That. Get, let me get set up, guys. We're good on camera there. That's all pretty good. Zoom in on that and move the light back over there. Okay. All right. All right, let me get this prepped. Couple drops of paint. Now for the challenge. First part was no big deal. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm test spraying. I'm trying to find that little sweet spot. That's fine. Okay. Eyeballs on. I think I'm ready. I'm gonna put the lean mixture in between now. Um, what do we say? It's a pick of a kit near. Yeah, it's probably old school fit and finish of Italeri. Um, Italieri, however you like to say it. Um, what was the one I did? The AB41 armored car. That was all flat, flat plate engineered model. So it was riveted panels that were pieced together. And every one of those Italeri parts had a rounded corner. So all your corners fit with little tiny rounded chamfers. <laughs> and it's supposed to be perfectly sheet, you know, the whole thing. It's like, it's like come on. Um, I think I did that one of the MMIR books, uh, magazines. Billy was wondering if the base coating with metallic color was a good idea. Yeah, go for it, man. Put like maybe like a nice bronze gray color down. You could do some cool stuff, a little bit of copper patina, kind of a the whole thing. Um, if you wanted to. Metallic primers halfway done. But I miss anything else. Did I miss any other questions while I get my head down here? Repeat the questions if I missed you guys. I'll come back. So I gotta remember to pull, I gotta go up and pull off, okay.
kind of missed it. That's not too bad though. It's not terrible. Come on. It's a little, the color's probably a smidge light. It's not too bad. It's actually got that really kind of rough and tumble. I'm okay with that. It actually might be workable. It's a little bit, I need to get a little bit more into the actual exhaust itself. Oops, I just drew that airbrush down. <laughs> Like, bam, I don't even care. Like, what am I doing? So I get the air down first and kind of just jog in the, the, the trigger. The color's a little too white, but that's okay. There we go. That, that helped. Okay. Oops, slightly off focus. There you go. That's too bad. It's a slightly too white, but I can tone that down. I can work with that. And I'm a little bit off target. It's a little bit harder to do, but that's actually okay. It's a little straight. The Tempest have a little bit more of an arc to the exhaust, kind of like a Sky Raider, kind of tra trails off a little bit. But that's okay. It's got that fast bird look to it. Okay, we'll work with that. Yeah, that came out all right. They come out pretty good. And so what I've done too, just a sidebar conversation is I've left, I've actually not painted the exhaust themselves yet, even though it's kind of being built up of color and it happens to be on the brown most of it. So it has kind of the rusty or metal undertones to start with, but I can, I can come back in and detail paint the exhausts in place after this is happening. So, and they're solid. So they're not all pretty and hollow and, you know, I apologize, <laughs> apologize. All right. Okay, not bad. The hard part's over. Now for the fun stuff, after I clean, of course. Let me clean this up real quick. Everybody good? Get them away. That went better than hoped for. Oh, I can crack that back open. That was probably around seven to eight PSI, maybe six down to six or seven. So I really had the, the pressure crank way down on that. Yeah, it worked out pretty good. No sputter, it, it's the spitting and the sputters that you have to really stress over. And that that actually sprayed really nicely. So in terms of a watercolor paint or water-based paint spraying like lacquer, I think that's very solid proof that it can do it. Uh, Silent Res does a metal metallic primer. Another thing you can do, um, when it comes to metallics, Slide side sidebar conversation. Most hobby metallics to me, the flakes are too big. They're, they're too metallic. Uh, you can put a couple drops of metallic into your primer to get that effect as well, and you'll get just enough. Uh, it is Italian for pig, Yuval. You are correct. It was it was a death trap. Those <laughs> poor dudes. Somebody came up with this idea of, here. Let's strap you to a torpedo and send you out. <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks, boss. Yeah, love you too. Yeah, unfortunately, that didn't work out very well. That idea didn't last. You know, I think a few navies tried that, right? And just did not work out. There are some interesting submarines, though. You know, the all the all the German midget subs and all that stuff. Okay, put you aside. Are we done with you, my friend? Oh, I think we're good. You get out of my schnizzle pie. Okay, back to that. Okay, put that over here for now. Oh, that guy's done. See, it's not. A, it's a little bit of waste of paint, but it's not much. So it's not a big loss. Yeah, it's a little um the however you say that is it Maella? Maella? I don't know how you say that properly. Um, because there's three vowels, four vowels, and five letters. Um yeah. If it's not Jimmy Jammers. Um but the concept is basically strap a Navy frogman to a torpedo to get into a harbor area and you putz around, you know, five knots underwater with your with your little thingy. And then you launch it at the at the capital ships to sink some of the, the stuff in the harbor. You know, I think that was really its its intended purpose. And uh, yeah, bit of a suicide mission, I would say. Not very, I think a couple did work in the mid to sub world, right? I think the British used them, the Germans used them and the Italians used them. There are a couple known um, incidents where that actually worked pretty well, or at least according, somewhat according to plan.
I'm just using my cockpit as my finger hold because that's the one spot I know I can mess up and not worry about the finger oils and stuff. Canopy's gonna go back over that anyway. You'll never see that stuff later. Yeah, this actually works. So I discovered that the rubber bands are like rubber feet. Like this, like I can't even move it. So it works really well. I've been kind of trying to figure this one out a little bit. The camera where it's, it's doing it all on camera is kind of the, the harder part, if you know what I mean. Okay. Uh, what did I need the worn tire black for? Was I gonna do something with that? Oh, I was gonna put it in the exhaust. I never did. Okay, well, all right. Never mind. Never mind. Get these out of here. All right. I'm gonna go take a quick nature break. I'm gonna go to John real quick. Uh, too much coffee this morning. What skill two hands you all? You guys chat amongst yourselves. I'll be back in two seconds. News for the gate, latest model aircraft colors, cathedral lead. Oh, tetrahydro lead or whatever that is. Here. Trying to figure out what to do for lunch today. This office is gonna be a hot box for the summer. Hits. All right. I think we're ready to do some more weathering. I think we got enough of the, the, the hard part done. Okay, he's on there pretty good. Yeah, it's a little bit too light. That color was a little bit touched. The contrast was a hair too much. And that's okay. And I think that first spread, I got a little too opaque. But that's not a problem. Cause we're gonna just, I'm letting it sit up a little bit. So as we've talked about earlier today, uh, one of the questions was um, the time length on, on mission in particular. And we're gonna, uh, what was it? Maybe 30 minutes, I, about a half hour ago, I painted the the, walk, the wing walk. And we did a little bit of that, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Don't look half bad. And you can see one of the steps, one of the kind of sidebar steps to do or to talk about. Look at all this masking tape back over here. Um, is if you're planning to chip an aircraft, you know, through the various process, because it's 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 life term of its its service life is different to tanks and robots. So if you're gonna, if, so what I what you saw me do um, is I kind of did some early underneath chipping and then sprayed the wing walk on top. That was intentional, and the reason for that was I wanted to have this kind of wear and tear that's really hard to do when you've got a gray stripe in the middle of it all to get that that look that I wanted because and I'll show you here in a sec what I was doing I'll repeat all this for you guys um but I was doing directional trip chipping where I was trying to create the cross hatch aircraft panel chipping look where everything so I'm not scrubbing in, in, in a vicious circle or anything like that I'm going longitudinally I'm going latitudinally that whole thing all through here kind of directionally chipping everything so it looks you know as they're as they're sliding off the wing that uniform parachute everything's going to start scraping that paint as they slide off all that stuff that's what all this is, you know, that and so on and so forth. And when they climb up and they put their knee up and they're climbing up and all that kind of stuff, that's how you get a lot of that look. And so, you know, the, the wear and tear of the pilot, you know, coming out of the cockpit and, and leaning over with the leg and all that stuff through here. That's what was all being done. Same thing over here. A little bit of the wear and tear, the chipping, same idea. And this was just kind of directional chipping this way, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And so we're gonna do a little bit more chipping now on this one. And as you can see, there's no hairspray, there's none of that stuff. So this is really using uh, the product to its full extent, I believe. Uh, I'm a big fan of this idea 
of what it's capable of now uh, in terms of understanding the, the, the nuances. Um, and that's all that this is. And I've talked a little bit about, you know, the differences. It's, it's very similar to the difference of driving a front engine car versus a rear engine car and what happens, the, 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 you know, how things happen in, a, in the turn and stuff. Once you understand the mission paints and how they work and what they're really powerful for, you can really maneuver them. So that's that's uh, just to reinforce that topic that I've talked about a few times. OK, this brush I don't need. Um, these guys here I do need. So the first thing up out of the gate is we've got the paint on. Let's go back over here. Let me get you a little bit of a, of a slight tilt. There we go. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of just wear and tear in the paint. Just kind of a little bit of the chip and the scratch. It gives you kind of the scruffiness. And then we'll get into the oils. We have the whole palette here. I put a couple additional colors on uh, up here this morning. But we've got some of that. We'll get that going here in a sec. And then we'll get into the OPR thing on the, on the weather and we'll talk about that. We'll do the top side today. We did the bottom side um, earlier, but when we did that wing over there, that's now slightly repainted. Um, but it's no big deal. Just re-weather. No, no, nobody cares. Um, at least I don't care. <laughs> you might have been like, wait, he lost all that. Um, let me check comments. So good. <clears throat> Jim Altergott. Hello, sir. How are you, buddy? I believe both the British and Italians had some success with the frog. Yeah. In the med. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's fun to call the weapon a pig. Yep. Well, it's like the warthog, right? Enrique Carlos. Hello. How are you? Thanks again for the wonderful streams. I just got your SM2 and Tank Art 1. They are awesome. Recommend. Thank you, sir. Yep. They're on sale, guys. Grab them while you can. Limited runs. We printed five a piece. That's it. So get them while they're hot. Uh, did I miss any other questions? Yeah. I can't have, yeah. The, <laughs> Jeff says, I didn't see that comment. No, I can't say I have cameras in my way. Yeah, it's there is. I'm used to it now, but it's it's when it's out of focus and that looks good on screen. That's solid. We did all right. It's a little too it's a little too much of a hot spot, but we'll 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 move in for twenty. We will we will do some magic. <clears throat> we will work some magic into this. Yeah, well, the Brits also launched a giant barrel bomb off the bottom of a plane that was pre-spun as it hit the water, so it would skip. There's a sidebar. I don't think I've, and I should, and I felt bad because I don't have the copy in front of me. Um, really interesting side story. I don't know. I mean, it's just one of those weird life instances that happened. Uh, I lived in San Pedro, Los Angeles, California by the uh, harbor about 12, 13 years ago. And we moved into this really nice house on this hill. And our neighbors, our immediate neighbors, the lady's name was, it was Jeff and Vivian. And Jeff and Viv, um, she was British, expatriate. Jeff was American. They were married 30, 40, 50. They are probably in their mid to late 60s at the time. Vivian was the granddaughter. No, I'm sorry. Vivian was the daughter of Churchill's head scientist that ran his experimental shop. And he wrote a book. And I'll have to research and find it because I'm just it just popped in my head as that comment came up about midget subs and the Brits and everything like that with, with the, the stuff that they did in the war. And, and it's all his... It's all the workshop stuff that they were doing for every, you know, for the army, for the navy, for the air force. All the they were the ones that came up with all the ideas for the skip bombing, for the midget subs, for every little weird idea that they had. Um, all the Churchill tanks with the bridge layers and all that stuff, and the, and the all those kinds of weird things they came up. And, she, and he wrote a book, um, and but she was she was his daughter, and so she she had a couple like old 1950s copies. I forget the name of the book too. A really good one. It's a good little read. It's not a big book. It's a small like 200 page book. Just kind of the stories of what was going on, how he interact with Churchill and stuff like that. Really cool. Sidebar. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, the Dam Busters. But yeah, we're supposed to get a movie with that, but I don't know if that's ever going to happen anymore. Um, Peter Jackson. All right. Yeah, that's why Wing Nut Wings is gone. Bye bye. All right. Just letting this set up a little bit. Bring some water back over here. We get another fresh paper towel. So I'm taking my time intentionally. I'm letting the paint have as much time as it can have while I'm on stream. I don't have a lot of time. That's for sure. Okay. Need a paper towel. Okay. So I've got two scrubbers. Uh, these are both OGs. These are the original hairspray chipping brush brushes from 29, 10. This little guy was just chopped off way back when. I'm going to get the paints back for school. Um, and then this is my little normal. You guys see this one a lot. But this one here, as you can see, it's got a little bit of a shape to it. Kind of these two peaks. 
And what I was doing, I was just kind of going this way and then I was going this way, kind of cross hatching. And that's all I was doing right here in the, in the wing roots. I was just kind of, I was just coming through here and I was just kind of cross hatching a little bit. Real gentle pressure, just taking my time. Just, it's dry, there's nothing on it yet. Um, yeah. All right. You, sir, quit rolling around. Quit messing around. Rolling brushes are like kids in the back. Where's Officer Mike? Are you are you working today, sir? Is 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 Mike rolled through? He might be busy. He's a dude. A little bit more on top there. You guys can kind of see. Okay. So I put the water. I unloaded it. Is my hand in the way? It is a little bit. Too bad. This way. Let me move you over here a little. Bit. Actually, no. Let me go the other way. Sorry, because my hands. I'm right-handed. So I was almost too dry. So I up the water just carefully. Remember, this paint's only a half hour old. There's no hairspray underneath. Can you guys see okay? Okay, cool. I'll have to block the camera a little bit sometimes. So see right there, I kind of when I airbrush, if you remember when I when I was airbrushing, I mentioned that where I, I kind of sprayed around the chipping a little bit to kind of keep it thin, thin right there, knowing that I'm going to come back in and do this a little bit. There's so little water going on. I'm not really disturbing the previously chipped areas. Like I know a lot of you guys get concerned about that and the whole thing. Like what if I chip the section and I respray and chip again? Usually it doesn't matter too much because you've already chipped off what's going to chip off. And if you keep the water in check, you shouldn't have too many problems with that. So I'm kind of chipping through the whole section now. You can see the how wet that is. It's, it's almost nothing. I keep cleaning that bristle off. Take your time. It'll start happening. So I'm just kind of cross hatching that, that wing walk a little bit. Now that's because the surface of this plastic model is butt smooth. But when you get into the, the stressed skin, that's why you get that ripple effect in the chipping. So I'm kind of trying to fake that a little bit. So again, I'm just taking my time with the brush here. Let me, let me just show you what I do. So I dip it, put my toe in the water, loads it up. I'm wiping it out. I'm using the, the colored paper towel so I can see. And I move the thing along. So when I see that there's no water transferring to the paper towel, that's probably ready to go. That's the simple process. It's all visual, it happens almost you know instantly. And you can see how quickly you start to get the wear and tear in that. See how I got a little bit of that cross hatch? I got a little bit of cleanup right here. And when you have that, because you're pulling paint, you're moving paint around, so it does go other places. Um, just take another one, get that water out of it and just kind of Kind of rescrub that real gentle, real just this is just kind of wiping up the residual a little bit right there. It just kind of cleans that up a little bit. So you can see how quickly that happened. You probably almost didn't even catch that right there. But you can see kind of that cross hatched. And that's just taking this little scrubber. Again, you just take a pair of scissors and cut one of these up a little bit. It's an old one. Um, you need kind of a stiff, bris stiffer bristle for this. I'll just kind of show you the angles that I, you know, I kind of go almost 90 degrees. There's no water right now. I'm just kind of showing you kind of how I scrub and see how, like, I'm not really pushing down pretty hard. You kind of, this is a sanding process basically. Because what you don't want to do is flood the surface with water. It's a water-based paint. It all lifts off of the water and all of a sudden you get too much water and this turns into a whole shit show which is half the problem you guys are gonna face. So when I say there's almost no water on this, take that to heart, like really almost start with the dry brush and then slowly add in the water and then see kind of where it goes and where you get it, where you get stuff. So see just here, I'm just trying to, just real slowly try to get those vertical scratches in there. It's kind of a directional flow. I could probably even go down the, the walkway a little bit. 
And I can start to control this now. See, I'm just starting to control this a little bit. See how it pulls the gray out? So you got to kind of wipe that up a little bit. Because you are removing the paint. It does have to go somewhere. So it either goes in the brush or on the model, which is why you see the paint bleed. And the other thing that you see me do is you see how we've got a, I've got a panel shape in here. So now I'm out, at this point in time, I've already started to see where you've already got the color shifts changing between the panels. Instead of really doing all the, the, the pre-shading color conversation of airbrushing heavy, all this mottling and discoloration, blah, 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 like all that. And then trying to do all this on top, I'm actually going the other way. And this might throw some of you off a little bit because what I'm doing now is you see all this discoloration in here. I'm working that into the paint now. From this point forward, this is all happening. So from this point forward, there's no varnish conversations at all that are ever going to happen again. I'm not going to varnish this model. I'm not going to come back in and, and varnish that model because if you see how the light catches that wing root right there by the engine, see that glossy bit? That's exactly what happens in the real thing when the boots and the uniforms are buffing that paint and the metal's coming through. That's what's going to happen. So if you varnish that, you're going to kill it. And if you kill it, it's dead. So I'm keeping, so for also, I see how I rotate down. You see that kind of, you get kind of that desert vibe in the paint of this kind of pasty oxidation, dustiness happening, but you can't go tank dusty yet. You can't go that direction. Back that up to episode 59 and rewatch that part two of that conversation is, remember there's a whole conversation in there when, when I get to the, to the camo and spraying all that, I spent, cause I rewatched it last night to remember what the colors I was using. I had to repaint some stuff. I had some damage up here. I had to spray some brown again. So I went back and redid it and watched what I said. And, and um, there's a whole conversation in episode 59 of painting this, of filtering and toning down all the paint first. And I even did this with the roundels last night. All the markings are faded already. They're already sprayed lighter. The bottom ones are a little bit darker. You can see the variations in color. And what I'm doing is I'm desaturating my colors as I paint versus post shading light bulbs so if you go back watch 59 what i say in episode 59 is i paint sky first middle stone with the sky in the middle stone paint the 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 earth with middle stone and sky inside the brown the earth brown that desaturates that color all with with this, with this color here and i talk about doing that with three-tone camo so if you're painting and you want to fade your paint filter it first this is what I'm doing because the burnishing process of the chipping and knowing that that's coming, see how that darkens those panels back up now? Hopefully that clicks. We'll get heavy into that on the P61 uh, with the OD and the gray. Like we'll go over that intensely, but that's that's kind of one of the things that that's at play here. Uh, I don't use warm water for chipping, Jim. First off, that's almost impossible because you got to keep going to the sink for warm water. And that it, I just realized that Warm water chipping is a little bit superior, slightly superior. It's not enough to make a difference in room temperatures. Fine. I don't use ice cold. I just use tap water, room temperature, and it just stays room temp. See you later, Paul. Good to see you, buddy. We'll see you soon. If you kill it, it's dead. That's just how that is. Tanker 4 arrived and already loving it. You're welcome, Pietro. Uh, that's the first one. Yeah, congrats, man, because Pietro won the on the giveaway. Lou from it's it's what you're doing doing here with MMP and water, some of the Windex chipping in TA. Yes. Um, it, it's, it's the process of, so there's a greater conversation. There's a larger umbrella conversation and, and there's Windex technique. There's, there's a race ability with this. It's in what I show in tank art one with the Vallejo chipping fluid and it with the T72 and the Patreon stuff. It's the chemical reductive process and whether it's a water, a lacquer thinner, a paint thinner, a Windex ammonia base on a lacquer paint, which is what the Windex thing is. Mission models as being a water-based paint, it, it's, it races with the water. So it's an easier conversation for us to have because it's a really simple thing to do. There's no other chemicals we need to buy. It works pretty well. And you see here, that's a, that's a half hour, 45 minute effort. Um, and I'm working pretty slowly. Um, it's all in control and I'm not, I'm not out of control. And yes, it is kind of, um, I think the Windex te technique probably has a slightly better sanding property to it. So in other words, if you have a, a triple layer car and it's for civilian use, if you have a junkyard or an old vehicle, 20, 30 year old, and you've got primer, you've got resprays, you've got multiple colors on a car side or a door or fender with that beautiful arc, the Windex does sand through the lacquer a little smoother gradation. 
The gradations here are not as smooth, but you could airbrush things, you could do some things with oils, you can kind of mimic it a little bit. So um, ammonias won't work on this. Like it, all that conversation doesn't work with Mission, so I don't use it. That's what that makes sense. But it's, it's the same, all this concept of taking a chemical and wearing paint off and rubbing paint off really pulls things through. It's, it's a game changer in terms of wear and tear on a fine scale because there's the hairspray chipping and that's chip paint. That's flaked chip paint. This is, this is different. This is what does it look like three months in the field of crew maintenance of pilots, the, all that uh, stuff. Same with Navy birds. Uh, all this, all this happens over and over and over again. And that's really what we're going for is we're going for that kind of repetitive common use wear and tear versus, you know, sharp impact, you know, artillery shrapnel or banging into buildings or running through trees and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, mother nature, you know, the abrasiveness of coral islands, you know, if you look at all the propellers and the, in the front wing roots of all the Navy birds and Japanese stuff in the, in the coral island, all that coral shell, that's what the islands are made of. It's just a volcanic abrasive. It just tears paint apart. So, and it's gonna be something you do on the back of propellers, you know, where you've got the black and then you've got the metal on the backside, same concept. Um, yeah, chem I'm doing it more and more, Chris, definitely. And someone like you, I'd like to see embrace it because I think with your skill set, I think you can do magical stuff with it personally. Oh. <laughs> right, you all? Yeah. Apparel, seg segue, apparel is coming. That's a good, uh, we'll have to keep that one. Do a Jimmy Jammer shirt, and if you kill it, <laughs> and then you put like a little asterisk caveat. If you kill it with varnish, it's dead. Yeah. Turn All right. We're almost ready. I'm letting that, that exhaust set up enough. I gave it a little extra few minutes working on the wing root. So I'm going to switch brushes. Go back to this guy. And I think, Chris, you did a little bit of this you are talking about. I mean, I don't know how far you got on yours. Just taking my time. Almost dry. I'm just focused on that on this exhaust. Just trying to scrub back some of that underneath. And this will bring back some of the decal brightness underneath there. See how that's starting to pop just a little bit. I'm taking my time and going hyper slow or in, uh, with water. There's almost no water. Cause I don't want to get like a streaky worn out weird look. I'm just trying to calm this down a little bit. I got a little bit of see, got a little bit of that smidge through there. I can probably cut this down a little bit too. I'm barely touching the model, just skipping it. And this also cuts down a smidge of the overspray. You get a little bit of the, some just hyper, you know, the really up close freckles you see. It's a, it's a fairly tight area, but this brush kind of has that scruffiness to it that I like, so. See how the, see what's happening here is like, you, if you look up here, see how just by taking this brush with just a, a hint of water in it. So it starts to burnish that corner, that edge a little bit. It puts a little bit of a sheen into it.
So the trick here though, is, is there's almost no water on the surface. You can see how dry that is. So I'm just trying to knock that exhaust down just a smidge. And actually what's nice is that as I brush that, because I put the dark on the, on the like the dark gray over the, the actual pipes, like burnishing the, the light uh, lean mixture back, it's starting to actually pop in that kind of, well now it's rubbing down to the other, but now I went a little bit too much. That's okay. Oh, I lost my, I lost my, I got too happy. It's an awkward reach. This is why bigger planes are going to be a problem. <laughs> I know when I get into the big scales, this is going to be an issue. It's got somewhere to go, so you got to keep kind of working it out a little bit. So what I'm doing is this kind of this residual discoloration I'm going to be using as kind of pre-weathered areas a little bit. So that exhaust is probably going to clean up a little bit around them where the pilot kind of Lost a little bit of it. It's okay. It's funny because now it's you know what it is? It's it's chipping over the it's chipping over the matte varnish. You can see how the paint reacts slightly different to how it adheres slightly different to the to the AK stuff. Snizzle pie up a little bit. I think I lost a little bit of my effect, a little too much, but that's okay. I kind of pull, I kind of soften that transition. Yeah, I lost a little bit of it. But we'll see what we can do with the oil paints, which is okay. There's some green camo underneath as well. So that's what you see. You're seeing the colors of, of the previous work versus the actual, like I, I didn't paint that in proper order. Whoops. Probably put that down. And you'll see here too, what I do is I go, I go kind of between the panel lines. And the water will dry into this paint. And I'll show you what I'm doing here in a sec. There's a photo I've got, I'll pull, I'll pull it back out. Just kind of drying this, I'm letting the water dry in kind of a stipple pattern. And it's creating real, real hyper subtle little variations in that. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little bit of this look here. It's this first photo, it's, it's a really good shot actually. If you really, if you start to study the photo. 
Yeah, you can see I lost a little bit of my exhaust back there, but I can rebuild some of that up, okay? But you can see this is all the, all the what I believe that's to be all boot marked. I think that's the rubber boots on the, on the lighter color showing up through. But you can see how the, the, the gun bubbles there have a little bit of a sheen, but the, the gray has almost no reflective sheen. So you're getting a, a bunch of variations between all your all your different uh, elements. So I'm trying to work that through and I'm just gonna, I need to see what's going on up here a little bit more in the back side of this wing here. So that's obviously the ammunition bays and they're, they're standing over here opening these and then they work back and forth. So that's kind of what you're looking at. And there's photos of that in here, actually. Let me see if I can, I can find one real quick. There's a couple of shots of this in this book in particular that's, uh, well, there's that shot too, which is really nice. So there's your good close up of the wing walk on this Typhoon, but it's it's kind of the same idea. But you can see kind of the scruffs and, and marks in the paint. And it looks like there's almost like a black edge. It's on probably a, it's probably some sort of taped product or something like that. I'm not sure. It's probably the, the, the gritty paint. There is, let's see here. Of course, it's right when I can't, when I, <laughs> Where did it go? Where'd you go, mofo? That's another good one too. Just kind of. So you can see this one, the exhaust is pretty much cleaned off. There's a little bit of the, the markings kind of, and this was really nice back here. I love the discolorations back through here, the variations in the, in the thing. I still have to put the flash on the back on the tail. This is a good picture too. It's good for all the, the, the various paint, uh, what happens in there. But that's all the aluminum in the, and there's probably a bit of yellow peeking through with the yellow zinc chromate. Where is the group photo? There's a group photo of these dudes working on this thing. Let's see here, hold on. Yeah. So this is a, this is a good, kind of relationship video. So you can see the fuel spill over that. He's in the, he's in the ammo bay there. Um, wing walks just trash. You can see the pilot steps are through there. His little, all that little stuff up here. You know, he's, he's like, Joe, <laughs> can you see that Joe? I lost something. It's, it's down there. Wait, a little bit to the left. And then this guy's putting some, probably some oil. This guy is taking a break. <laughs> I love it. He's the only one that knew the camera was on. So this stuff's important. Like that's all critical stuff to like really work out where you're going with that. You know, all that's kind of the important part of this. Uh, Ray Davis, it's all mission models, brother. Okay. <clears throat> so that's actually come along pretty well. I lost a little bit of my exhaust thing. I could probably, if I had any balls, I'd probably respray a little bit of it. And you can see I rubbed off the, the mat and now the, the decal thing. So I'm probably gonna have to. All right, repair time happens. You guys get extra love. Get an extra love. I didn't mean to. Oh, I didn't mean to do it, Ossifer. I didn't mean to. Cliff Heron, how are you, sir? No, there's nothing to be scared of, of Cliff. It's there. there is the one thing. Um, aircraft in, in in Mecca, in particular, they're, they're similar in the in the concept of. Um, the reality is you have to build in a process to really get to the end game. You have to really think your steps through armor. The, the, the thing we all like about armor, the, for those of us that do a lot of armor is that you kind of just build it and you paint and you go and you kind of work the areas as you want. There's not a ton of like process order in terms of the, in, in combination to Gunpla and painting robots and how you have to paint that step by step and the parts and the parts and parts and put the thing back together and do all that. Same thing with aircraft a bit, you know, it's, you know, inside out with the cockpit, slapping the, the pieces on, but you've got this crux of form shape that really kind of gets in your way. You know, how do you do certain things? You get the upside to get the bottom all, you know, you've actually got a belly that you have to worry about. So it's, you know, plus gear. I'm not, we're not doing any landing gear and that stuff yet. Well, like I said before, if you don't know, we'll get into that later. We'll, we'll do some good gear stuff, you know, I mean, or we just have Chris on and he can show us his F-14 Tomcat landing gear all day. <laughs> Just let you do the just let you do the whole stream. Phone call. Said scam likely. I want to know who scam likely is. Because every time I see scam likely, I'm thinking, was Blake Lively calling me? I'm like, oh wait, that doesn't say Blake Lively. <laughs> that's not what that says. 
you know, wishful thinking. You never know. You never know what can happen. Maybe they're maybe they're into building models. Who knows? Okay, I need to paint some more gray. Um, higher black. Let's let's shift the color up a little bit. Opportunity. Peter Stackless, how are you? Armors build, paint, go, unless you're going all out in the interiors. Yeah. Have you ever met the F-104 Italian? <laughs> yeah, not yet. I did have a conversation about the, the purchasing of the Italian distributors in, in Europe uh, in terms of when they when they purchase Italian subject matter from the other model kit manufacturers. I had an interesting conversation about that. Um, yeah, invasion stripes are hardly ever properly done. You know, the whole perfect mass invasion stripes. In fact, I, I will do... I'm having a conversation in my head about the maybe overpainting D-Day stripes on the top and leaving the bottoms on the on the P61, but I have to kind of match my markings up a little bit. I might have to do slightly what if. These are paints, uh, Ray Davis. You're asking, I think it's all mission. It's all mission models. A little mess. <laughs> I use I use them. I use them, boys. All right, I need a new thingy. Okay, and we're gonna do we're gonna we're do two things. I'm gonna repair my exhaust. Because I got too happy with it. And as you can see, the water rubbed off the matte coat, AK. Because so that's the learning process. I'm like, huh, okay, I gotta pay attention to that. I'm gonna put a drop of, uh, we're gonna add a little of the tire black into this one. It's kind of a little bit more of a green. Slightly over thin, just, just a little, not much. Making way more paint than I need, but I find that sometimes you, you can't make too little. It's, it's hard to make a really tiny amount for what this kind of stuff is. And I'm, I'm less rebellious with that. I used to do all this in the airbrush when I need just a tiny amount. And I will say I'm a little bit less, um, you know, going down that road. It's a smidge thick. I'm just doing a visual adjustment. If you guys aren't familiar, if, the, if you're new to the stream, welcome. You know, hit that like and you know, think about subscribing if you like the content, because this is all you get. Scale model 24/7. That's a little thick. Let's see the second one, yeah, not much. So I'm guessing my tires, tire black is a little bit on the thicker paint side. The one thing I have noticed, and you will see this in occasion with certain brands, especially in the water-based conversation, but especially as an organic uh, base paint. You will get different thicknesses in the bottle because the stuff that it's made from changes. It's not a consistent plastic like the other stuff. So I've noticed like, for example, Insignia Red, it's a very, very thin color in the bottle. And then like the tire black was was pretty thick, which I think uh, is making this a little thicker. So you do have to be adjust. So the reason I show this, the, the point of all of this part of this here, first off, it's super easy because it's all visual. And you're not, when you're not chatting me up, it's, it's no big deal, but this here, just to watch this, I use this preset formula for every single thing I do with an airbrush. So it, it, it works, it's almost foolproof. And what this is doing, the reason that visual runoff, that speed that I'm looking for, it cuts through all your temperature and humidity problems. If, if that's gonna be an issue for your paint, you'll see it. So you adjust thinner in paint to, if it's too cold, too hot, too whatever, by using the visual acuity method of like how that runs off and what this looks like, you'll find that that cuts right through all that. So in other words, if we say, you know, 30% thinner to paint in the books and the thingies, and you do 30%, like on the money, and you're like, it doesn't work. This is, use that. John, what were you asking? I heard that Amber's been, <laughs> John Smith. You know, I didn't watch any of that trial. And man, I tell you what, the pictures I've seen, they look worn out, don't they? You're like, whoa, that didn't go well. <laughs> you're like, that's, that's, that's cutting that down. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't pay too much attention. I'm not a big celebrity news guy, so I didn't pay too much attention. It's you know, I don't even know why it's news. I mean, they're just arguing. <laughs> they got in a fight. They don't like each other anymore. It is what it is. I lost my dude. You come back over here. Okay, let me set the plane up on the angle again. We're gonna do the exhaust first, and then we'll we'll lay out. We'll just mat. We'll do a little mat coat. Probably should go the other way first, but I don't want to screw up my painting order. It's okay. I'll review what I'm doing here in a sec, so you guys can check this out. Squeaky brakes outside. Set that up there. OK. 
Okay, hold on one sec. Did I put that away? Oh, it's right here. Okay, get that angle just so. Just back over this way. Gonna move you out of the way a little bit. Hold on, guys. Yeah, you can see that when I rubbed all that matte varnish off, you can see the sheen of the decal. So you can see how effective that is in terms of what, what happens with all that. It's a good learning thing. Okay. Probably gonna have to do the light coat again, too. I'm probably gonna have to do two. Ooh. Crank the way down. So I'm noticing when you when you pull off the trigger, you get kind of a hot spot. Oops. Seriously? Oh. So when you pull off the trigger, you get a little bit of a hot spot. So what I'm trying to do is leave the, leave my finger down and then adjust the spray. So you hear how the air's on? I'm moving my finger down. See, and as I, as I come to the end of that, I, I'm lifting the, the airbrush away a little bit. I'm right, trying to get the muscle memory and kind of that, kind of a warm up, like some push-ups. You know, just kind of getting. So we we'll probably have to redo the exhaust. that up. All right, hold on. Every time I'm pulling the trigger off, I'm getting a spot. So I'm doing it wrong. Hold on. I need to get the paint to flow. And then... Yeah, I keep doing that. Every time I set one little moment, it's like my fingers like flexing a little bit. Let me go a little bit more pressure. Hold on. Until they get for using the airbrush two days straight. I can get some good squiggles, but I'm not getting a good. There we go. All right, way too much, but that's okay. I'd rather get the flow right and then work it out. Okay, hold on. Yeah, it looks like shit. I know it does. I'm not, not happy with it, but that's okay. Um, yeah. Okay, let's see if we can do this. Um, now I'm, ch I'm chasing, I can tell. What's up, Rizdom? How are you, brother? Long time no see. How you doing down there? Okay, hold on. I'm gonna see if I can pull this off.
making making adjustments here. Glad to know when you paint a coat, sues and relieves <laughs> leaves the model. Yeah, I'm not sure what that means, Peter. That's an unusual question. I think what I need to do is pull that needle. But I'm also moving my finger in the wrong way. Like in other words, you got to get that paint to go and then not instead of pulling the, the paint up, move the airbrush away to get that feathered. Because that's experience right there. That's that's not doing that enough to remember that part of it. What I was doing was stopping with my finger and that would put us like as the airbrush cuts off, that ends the paint and then you get like an abruption. And that's what you, you that's what I was fighting there. Because that second time when I went and kind of did it properly, I'm like, oh, yeah, there, there you go. Yeah, it's OK. It's all right. But the color looks good. We'll fix this here. But I need to just get you the fuck out. You hear a little squeak. Hold on. Hold on. It's always like that. <laughs> when you're trying to get something done, you're like, no, the airbrush is like, no, no, we ain't, we're not going to work yet. Hold on. Dirty needle. Dirty needle. I saw a little piece of flake paint go down to the, the, the thingy, too. Hold on one second. Do a little quick clean here. Do a little back work. Mm -hmm. Working right now. Seen I thought I would say hi. Well, the boss is gone. <laughs> That's good. Okay. There we go. Make it a little bit more thinner. Hold on. Let me do a quick. Oh, yeah. There we go. Yeah. I, I can see there's little specks. So I did not clean properly. Poof, poof right there. Yeah, it's never it's never really a problem. It's usually, uh, usually just us. Uh, I have used a single action airbrush most of my modeling career. Yeah, get a double action. So much nicer. Yeah. 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 And if you're yeah again if you're if you're used to single action, you go to double. You know, it's down for air, back for paint. You know, versus single action is, is as soon as you touch it, they all they all flow together. And that does happen. There's a couple guys still use single. I think Will uses single. He's got the, the, the finger issue. He needs it. I was, no, I was showing you that adjustment. Yeah, I'm just adjusting it. Okay. Sounds good. You can usually hear the problems too. And it looks clean. Okay. All right. We're going to have to do a little bit of touch up. I'm going to see if I can do this. I'm probably going to screw this up. I'm probably going to make it worse. So fun fact, but we'll see. Yeah. I'm taking a little bit of the middle stone. Trigger feels a little weird. Hold on. Yeah, sometimes the tr trigger feels squishy. You know, you're not getting like a real direct connection. Let's make sure everything's tightened down properly. Yeah, there we go. Probably it's probably getting dirty down in here. It probably needs a good cleaning up in there. Question on staring, start storing oil paints in the freezer. Do you let them thaw? Yeah, I do. About a half hour. Uh, oh, he's, Will has started using double action. Okay, sweet. Yeah, he probably has more finger movement now or just better. better. You out of here. See you, all. Take care. Oh, he's our boy in Israel. Okay. Merkaba. That's how you properly say that tank name. And you all is the one that told me because the man used to drive him. And those are stuff, that boy. All right. Okay. What I probably need to do, though, is... Hold on and flip this guy back. Yeah, aircrafting on stream is different. Definitely different to 
you know, everything else going on. And we still haven't got to the oil paints. We're still, we're going to probably go a little bit long. We'll probably go three plus today. Um, good news is I'm healthy and fine. I'm, I'm strong as a horse today. So we can go a little, we can go for another 45 minutes to an hour. We'll get to the oils here pretty soon. The oils will go pretty fast. I promise. Um, but this will, this will, we'll continue with this project because there's a lot to this, this conversation is just getting started. So, and you, there's a lot of stuff that's already happened to the model. I mean, if you, if you look at where this is today from when we finished, like if you go back to 59 episode 59 and see the final, the, see the paint job after it finished and you look at it today, but here, all right, let me see if I can pull this off my friend. Oh shit. What's that? Before I run the risk of damaging everything in life, I spilled some paint. Put down fresh canvas. I just prefer working on the paper towels. In case you guys are all wondering. Okay, let me get a little bit more of an angle there. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Put this up here. Okay, so. I'm gonna see if I can do this. Without a mask or masking. Be careful because those those letters are right there. Just trying to clean, just trying to clean that shape up a little bit. You can see how fine that spray is, though. You can see how there's almost no overspray. So in terms of like painting quality, you know, I mean, it's 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 an excellent brand. I mean, I'm not trying to like sell this or anything, but it's it, it does its it does what it's supposed to do. That's hard to do. If you don't know what I've just done, like to do what I'm just doing, <laughs> to spray a light color over dark without overspray, that's that's a tough one. I'm just slowly working my finger till I see the paint come out. Oop, a little much. I screwed up a little bit. Really low PSI, probably seven or eight, nine PSI. Just air drying that. want just right under the R I need a little bit more and I'm just running I'm running on the knife edge of risk here just effing this whole thing up you guys are probably cringing over there but actually what it's doing what we can do too because the color is slightly lighter
Do I not prep this stuff? What is going on with Michael? <laughs> the fuck I put shit away for? I'm going to need that. Hold on, we're just doing a little, little happy after, after airbrushing because we have the thing out. I should probably call that quits, <laughs> but yeah, you come. However, however, first off, there's this dude. So I'm um, in the ballpark. It's a little much, it's a little much. It's, it's not, uh... here we go. So I think the shape is better. Definitely how I've got the arc better. See how they how see how that matches. So I'm looking at the wing walk shape where it started this guy and then the, then the exhaust stream coming off the exhaust. That's not too bad. It was all right. You know, I think I, I think I could I could I could defend myself. <laughs> it was a little bit of a shit show. Um, but do I really want to put the light? I think we're going to pass on putting the more lean part because I think that little mixture coming off there and we can, we'll do the rest of the oils, which we should get to now. Cause you all like, shut the fuck up and let's get going. All right, guys. Sorry about that, but we're good. Problem solved. There you go. Pro tip, how to fix shit. <laughs> Sal's probably shaking his head. Yeah. Yeah. A little fix, a little fixing. Take it into the repair shop. <clears throat> yeah. I messed up that second exhaust painting a little bit and that's what it was. So in that specialty type spraying of, you know, that you almost need to practice that a lot, like to get that hand motion to do that, because you understand that my fingers down on the air and then I'm, I'm pushing back or, or I'm pulling back to get the paint to flow with the air down. And then I'm moving my hand in this, it's like, a, it's golf, dude, bro. It's such golf, it's such an analogy. It's that compound movement of multiple finger down and back plus the hand to get that flow. You know, because you're doing a you're doing a, a motion piece thing with the, you know that whole deal. Definitely been a minute since I've done that. What is the black thing I see inside the intake? Under, oh, it's just the radiator. It's it's just part of the the radiator um, cooling. It's it's whatever this thing is here. It's just what it looks like. It's a big intake rate. I don't know. It's the Napier engine, right? It's the Napier. Is the Napier upside down? Is it an inverted? I can never remember that. But yeah, that's just the cooling intake. Ooh, don't spray that dumb shit. Don't do it. All right. We'll get the oils now, I promise. Oh, but first, wait. Hold on. That's a lie. I need to do some matte coat first. Okay, throw that away. Get that out of there. These are good. Put you back in. Okay, we're going to switch airbrushes and throw down, throw down some ultra matte, which I guess you guys are seeing all the love today. But it's good. Yeah, this thing's getting, I can tell this thing's, and then you just strip it down and clean it out. You can you can tell it kind of fights you a little bit. You have to be sensitive to that with your, with your thingy. Yeah, Jim, I'm sure that's a Google thing. You can probably just Google Typhoons and Tempest and stuff in the motor. I think it's a, the Sabre or the Napier or whatever, it's one of those. Real problematic engine in the beginning, that's why it delayed all that. Typhoon was supposed to replace the Hurricane way early in the war and it, it got delayed because of the motor. Most of the time, it's all motor development. Same thing with the Tempest. It went through a few engines as well, various versions before it came out. Tempest was also pretty late to the, to the party, later than it was supposed to be. I think that's why the Spit carried on, right? It was supposed to actually full on replace the Spitfire. I think the Tempest was supposed to take over all of it. And this, they just kept upgrading the Griffin Spitfires and it just kept doing okay. Something to that effect. Something like that. <laughs> Something crazy, crazy, crazy. It's like the P40 with the with the Merlin didn't do shit, so they just kept making Mustangs, like all that. Same thing with the the um, the Allison powered Lightning. The Merlin didn't do anything for it, 
So it's kept making Allison Mustang or Lightnings. Lightning kept ca capped out though a little bit. Lightning kind of pooped out in terms of its performance development. That actually turned out pretty cool. We've got kind of a nice little weathering doohickey thing going there. We 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 saved it. Patty cakes in the Midwest, 90 day. Where are you guys at? Where are we at? In between the mountains? I mean, I should know. I mail you shit. But I forget where you guys all live. Okay. Let me clean this up. Swap out this guy. I will show you how easy the Ultramat is. It, it's a nice, it's a nice varnish system. You're supposed to stay connected. Okay, this one I do spray in the, the cup. I use I use my other airbrush. It's my point three. It's my primer brush and stuff like that. So I don't put this through the mission model airbrush. Um, we don't need much. We just need to do a little a little smidge. Okay. I don't know. Just eyeballing it. And this is their older acrylic thinner. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm off camera. AK one seven one two. Some water. This is just quick, down and dirty. Getting a little savage with this stuff. Oops. Turn that off. Okay. I'm just Remat remat Cody in that decal. Might as well throw some extra down on this side too. The more you do, the better it goes. So you can see you can kind of overdo it. Wait, hold on. Come on, show me. Show me some love. There it goes. See how wet you can put that down. Yeah, let's see if I can do this on can if I can get it. Where's that angle? Okay, hold on. All right. There we go. You see that disappear? Like, all right. You're buying in now, aren't you? I know you are. You're like, what tomfoolery did he just pull in front of us? Bye bye. All right, we're good. We're back in biz, boys. There's a wonderful thing on YouTube, not that we're not on YouTube, but there's a dude, I forget the name again, another one of those channels. He was a, it's a YouTube channel of uh, the various aircraft uh, performances of World War II and he breaks down the aircraft by type. Um, and then he, he gives you all these uh, governmental graph data and in, in engine reports. Um, most of it's American stuff because he's a US guy. Um, and it does a pretty solid job with the footage in terms of like, you know, making sure the correct aircraft's on camera. I hate when they do that, right? Talking about P-40s and they start showing you, you know, P-36s, you're like, dude, that's not a P-40, bro. <sighs> All that stuff. You know, like in the Battle of Midway movie, when they put in 10 different aircraft types for the one turn. <laughs> All that stuff. Oh, uh, snizzle pie. Yeah, he does a he did a really good job. There's a really interesting conversation in the, the, the U.S. government went through a whole process of the study of putting Merlins into lightnings and there's something to do with with the performance envelope as that engine ramps up in altitude in the in the supercharger turbo supercharger conversation kicks in and how the the Mustang does its thing because of it's a two stage and there's something with the lightning I forget the minor details of it but the lightning did not show any real dramatic increase in performance and the, the Mustang outperformed it at the altitudes that they thought the lightning would get better at so they just kept making the Allison lightnings instead as it was because it still performed perfectly in the envelope it was really meant for interesting stuff i mean i find all this stuff like super fascinating like that's the stuff i fall asleep <laughs> yeah okay are we ready for oils boys are you all done listening to me bullshit? <laughs> this aircraft stuff chris i don't know how you do it man respect on the whole aircraft love okay 
take down. Yeah, mad respect for all that. So again, if you if you're not familiar with YouTube um, and the usage of it, when you're looking at the screen in front of you, two things. There's a, a down when you when you scroll over it. There's a little icons. There's a rectangle icon. If you hover over that, it says theater mode. It'll move the chat that's on the right down below, and then it opens the window up bigger. So it's kind of a, a reshaping of the, of the stuff. So that's a nice way to watch. Uh, make sure you hit the 1080p in your in your uh, settings. Sometimes the, it'll default feed to like 720 DPI or sometimes even 360 on depending on what you're doing. Sometimes you have to, you'll see the little H, the red HD next to your gear symbol on the, on the screen. Um, so make sure you hit up to 1080 because we film at 1080 so you can you get a higher quality resolution and sharpness and stuff my camera works a little clumsy I, I must admit but you know one man show um and what else um oh time champ time chapter so there's a title under the video and you see the first paragraph the sentences of the first paragraph if you click the word show more if you click that it opens the full description i have all my brushes all the, the, the important stuff, the social media links, where to buy the books, um, how to do all that stuff. The the King Art, the brushes to do the affiliate link is all in the description down below. It's all these dudes here, all these fantastic brushes, uh, which we're going to use. Uh, we'll do a couple colors here. We need uh, some browns and, and tans. Get this little guy here and here. I'll put you over here. And I use double side tape on these guys to keep them down so I don't spill them. And plus, it helps to get the, the paint in the brush. I need my, hold on, I need to switch to the white. Okay, so I've got this paper towel. I use the white paper towel so I can see the color. So let's get some thinner through that, condition those bristles. We'll get hustling here. Yeah, we'll go, we'll go, we'll do a good solid half hour. We'll do, the, we'll do this whole Jimmy Rig section up in here. We'll get you some stuff going. A little stipple brush. Okay, so I've got a couple blenders. So if you're new to the stream, a lot of you, you know, aircraft guys are rolling through now um, versus armor. Um, so in case you're not familiar, I use the red stripe as a blender and then the, the, the odd shaped bristles here, which is, this is an angle shader. Um, beautiful little stipple brush. I assume you use that a lot. And then the gold ones here, the number twos. Again, everything's in the description. Everything you need to know down there, all the King Art stuff, number twos uh, right here, boom, done. So they're all get a little get a little thinner in that. It's uh, odorless thinner. Uh, oil paints on the palette pulls out the linseed oil, gives us a beautiful little working um, little bit of happy love right there. Okay, these are a little bit dry. Uh, what I do is when I'm done per session, I just put these in the you put them in a Tupperware or lunch container in the freezer, and that'll keep the the paints from drying out. You just have to kind of it's like cake frosting. You have to kind of knock that dry part off a little bit. Some of these have dried out a little. Those are fresh there. Um, I don't want to wipe this in something to get on there. I don't want to do much speckling. Okay, so let's see here. What am I doing? Where's my dude here? Let me roll slow. Work this up a little bit. There's a lot of bravery getting that close with there. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't, that low heat, dude, doesn't, you can crank that down, dude, no big deal. Um, and you can see that, I mean, it's, that film was gone. It's funny because I, I put the decals, this is an interesting conversation, I think we've all witnessed unusually, is decals were down, matte coated before the stream, so the varnish, and so that killed all of the, the film. I did all my chipping, rubbed it off, because it's water-based and it's only been on for a little while, it rubbed right back off, just like regular water-based paint would. Um, because again it probably hadn't set up long enough so you can see so so the overall conversation of time i know paul's left but we were talking about um the mission paint in particular when you see me chipping and stuff like this on the stream i'm pushing the time em envelope just to show you something i normally wouldn't do if that exhaust i probably would have waited a day or two to let that set up a little bit and i can get more i can get finer gradations in the in the brushing and rubbing off later on when that paint sets up it had only been on there like 20, 30 minutes. So you saw it kind of chip a little weird. And that's because it was too soon. The reality was for streaming, it kind of sucks. But the harsh reality is, you know, the stuff that's three weeks old painted, it chips fine. The wing walk, I could get away with it because it's a more chippy look, but I wanted kind of a faded airbrushy look. So I wasn't quite getting that. And that's because it was too soon in the conversation. 
Plus, you also saw in this section right here, the mission paint over the AK matte varnish does perform a little differently. So mission on mission, it chips a little bit because the paint's kind of working together. Whereas the AK matte with the mission over it, it's, they don't play quite as perfectly. So you get a slight, you saw it chip like chip paint. You saw that happen, it was like, so I noted that too. So that's to make sure we all understand what was going on. That's what, that's what was happening. So it's good information to remember. And like even here, let me let me even do this here a little bit. So I did some repair damage, but I lost some of the um, the scruffiness of that wing root right there. So I'm gonna real carefully. There's a little bit of overspray in here. It's a little too wet, but that's okay. Just trying to scuff that up a little bit. I don't want to push my luck. I've already, I've already, I think I've, I've already used my nine lives up on this, on this scenario. Just getting this little bit of just a little bit, just there's a little bit of an edge highlight popping right there in that wing root, just a smidge. You probably can't see it. I don't want to rush. I don't want to risk too much. Okay. I gotta juice this guys up. Some of these are kind of dried up. So I had a little bit of extra thinner on the palette. This is just to get the paint a little bit workable. There it goes. Yeah, it's way too wet. That's okay. Kind of flooded that up. Soak up some of that thing. All right, <clears throat> let me hustle. So what I'm trying to do now is the first color is I need a little bit kind of a lighter shade of the of the base tone. I just need to get a little something that's a little too dark. Let me lighten this up over here. I'm just kind of working my colors. I'm kind of looking at the paper towel and then looking back up. This color is actually almost middle stone as it is. You guys can see all that. Okay, good. So I'm kind of looking like this color here is kind of a slightly lighter version of, of the base tone a little bit. And then I'm on the paper towel and I'm kind of looking at how wet the brush is. So I'm kind of just checking it. I want kind of a dry brush thing here. Just want to come in here. Kind of warming up because I've been doing all the painting and chipping. I need to, I need to switch gears if you know what I mean. Let me get this a little bit closer for you guys. Kind of switching gears here. It's kind of a, a light and dirtier, you know, dustier, scruffier. Just getting some color down. If you recall the stream, I forget the stream number, but when I did the underside wing of what I was doing with the weathering, kind of working each panel. And instead of going lighter on this one just yet, just trying to get a little bit of kind of a, it's kind of the same concept of the, the, the heavy duty airbrushing, pre-shading layered up airbrush conversation. I'm kind of reverse ordering this down uh, with the oils. Oh man, I made a mess. So the red one is the blender, switch to the blender. I'm not adding any thinner. So whatever thinner is on the brush and in the paint's workable, that's all you need. Now there's just this one panel line right here and I'm working right there. And then this guy up over here. And again, my, my, my brush shaking or my, my movement, uh, it looks a little crazy on camera probably, but what you're not seeing, it's a little bit of a tiny crosshatch. I'm kind of going back and forth, left, you know, airflow cross, kind of keeping that crosshatching weathering of the paint wear off in that same conversation a little bit. It's not perfect, but it's kind of the idea.
And then I can actually pull some of this because of that kind of a, like a dusty wing walk. And by working the thinner, really, really thin, or really, really light, if you will, I don't want to mix the words up too much. Uh, but when I apply that, there's no thinner on the, I mean, it's been conditioned. You see the, you can see what it looks like, but it's not wet. And there's, and you can see that the, you can see how the paint has a slight sheen to it. Let's see if we can kind of give you a close up here. I don't know if the light's gonna catch that just right. The paint is slightly wet. The camera does not know what to do with itself. Trying to see if you can get to, you can't quite see that right now. There's a little bit of a sheen to it because there's there's thinner in that because I'm mixing the, all that over there on the palette. That's where the thinner comes from. So when you're doing this on your own, just understand that when you're mixing on the palette, the thinner's in that, that's in the paint. You don't need to add any more to do what you need to do with it, is my point. <laughs> kind of get to the, the end result there. Because the biggest mistake you're gonna make is to start adding thinner to the surface. You're just gonna wipe all this away. And I'm just working with what thinner's in there and kind of working it over the chipped areas a little bit. The camera just is not, what I've noticed is too, just sidebar. So it's an iPhone with a webcam app. And so there's a, there's a, there's a performance delay. So the snap of the zoom isn't very good. I've been studying this a lot, trying to figure it out. So what I'm trying to do though is, is just have to keep focusing the autofocus button. So I'm just kind of starting to wear this panel in. So I'm gonna take another brush. We're gonna go the other way. So one of the things I think you guys have heard me talk about quite a bit, that's the tip of that looks pretty show. God damn it. I hate being clumsy on camera. There we go, that's better. Um, the tones on the model, even though they're faded and filtered and all that kind of stuff already, it's your middle value. So it's, it's the middle range. So we're gonna add a dark and a light, dark and a light when we need it. So if I need a darker tone of the base color, I'm going to start with something similar on the on the deal over here. So see, I've got kind of this middle stone color right here. I'll pull a little bit of a, just a burnt umber into a raw umber into it a little bit. That paint's going to flow. There you go. So in, instead of adding a dark color, like just a like raw umber to the to the model, I'm taking the base color and I'm, I'm blending in the raw umber into the paint. Maybe that makes a little bit more sense for some of you guys. And I'm doing that right here on the cardboard. Now, sometimes the dark colors, like an actual dark colors is needed for grease and grime and all that stuff, but. I want a little more work gray. Hold on. I'm working on the fly here. Another thing you're going to notice is you're not seeing me put a lot of the panel lines in directly just yet. And the main reason is because what I'm trying to do is, is control the, the outcome, if you will. I'm a mad scientist. So it's a little wet. Not too much thinner. Kind of jog it up towards the line. 
Kind of let that dark color fall under the panel line on natural on its own. I'm just working right with that little shape. See how I stopped right at the camera there a little bit, but I can, if I wanted to, I could pull it through. And what I'm trying to show you is the flexibility of the system. I can be as precise or as sloppy as I want to be. problem right now is is I could be completely wrong with where the darks and the lights go so there is that but I'm hustling I'm trying to show you techniques right now so I'm just gonna kind of go with my gut here on this And in small scale aircraft like this, especially, you know, these kind of really tight panel line stuff, what I'm trying not to do is panel line the whole thing or pin wash, same, same, same term. I use panel line a lot because I do a lot of robots. Oops, I jogged that too much. Because this is where the exhaust will collect down in here. I can probably... lights can actually some of these panel lines are so faint it's nicely it's a nicely engraved kit i mean i give academy credit but when you get the paint stuff on and matte coat on it's something that you lose so this is still the application here it's a little on the wetter side than i normally it's a little bit too wet so I'm just trying to be real gentle with my with my spottiness here. Is that a line there? Nope. We're making a line there. See, having that having that exhaust color down there is working in my favor now. So I'm just getting all this down first here. We're gonna come back and we're gonna blend this up here in a sec. So I'll switch to the blender again. Just kind of knocking those shapes down a little bit. What the bristle kind of does, it just kind of takes the hard edge of the brush of the brushwork down a notch. See, it's a little too wet. See how much thinner is going down and it's spreading out? It's a little bit too wet. That, that matte coat's down too. That matte coat has a real nice, uh, whoops. Sorry, I hate that. It's like everything's right. This is, this is why the camera sucks right, right there. So I'm just slowly going through all the areas I applied that to. I'm gonna do a little stipple to get kind of that splotchiness. So this all kind of mimics that airbrushing when you're doing like, that's what I'm talking about. This mimics a lot of that kind of work in a different manner. Now on this scale at this refinement level, I just think doing it this way, you just get a little bit, you know, I think you have a little bit more control. 
it's tough to hold everything in the right place to keep you guys on camera. So I apologize for that too, by the way. I'm just trying to get this to, that doesn't work either. It's like trying to find the right. So we can get some airflow stuff going here. So just having a little bit of that, that dark in there too, just get a little bit of the splotchiness in the light. It's not always a perfect, you know, blend between panels. Oops, a little mess there. Clean that up. So say on the example, oops, Jesus fucking Christ, dude. Sorry guys. Like I just hate how it goes out of focus and like I don't know. It's like I can't do it all at once. I need a, I need a I need a feller to come in here and film. That's okay. If it, if you get a position like this, like we know, right here I need another one. Um another brush. The edge of that walk gets a little bit darker, so I can come in here. Someday we'll make all the big money, we'll buy all the big equipment, and we can kind of come back and do all this stuff. Yeah, these paints are dried up already, damn. Okay, hold on, let me shut my brush here. So what I'm gonna do is kind of re-edge that, that walkway a little bit for the wing walk area. I need so much precision with this. So I've gone with a slightly darker color right there. I use that stipple quite a bit too. So I just kind of rebuilt the, the darker edges of that, of that wing walk. You tighten those lines up as, as tight as you need to go. So the precision of the brushes and everything actually really allows you to kind of come in here and start to really tighten some of that up. Stuff get put away. This is why I'm single. I always get in trouble with that shit. I need I need a thing so I can stop holding it. All right, everything's in focus. Oops, lost my sharp idea. Okay, Yeah, so this is why you, this is why I go through the process of having the good readers, the good glasses, so I can see what I'm doing. And see how what I've started with is kind of a tone on tone right now. I still have room to darken up if I need to. So if I can, if I want to, I come back with the brush I just threw down because I was mad. That's right here. <laughs> come back in over here. Okay, I'm gonna go one step darker on the panels now on the on the pin wash. And I'll get to the chat here in a sec. Uh, the exhaust, Zal, the um, the dark gray was um, the worn black camo, worn tire camo. 
And then the lighter tone was um, 5P pale gray, but it was a little too light. I probably should have put a drop of the exhaust in there. So I'm pulling in kind of a, like a dark gray black with raw umber with a smidge of the middle stone in the paint. Kind of a really dark version of the base color. This guy here, not full black, but there we go. See how just by adding just the raw paint almost. Here, hold on, I'll rotate that through. Basically any really dark gray Zal will work. The smidge of brown. Just kind of like a like a collection of exhaust grease and grime on that little wing root. Yeah, this low heat won't hurt anything either. Two hands. See how precise this is though? This is why you need these big, these nice crispy brushes. And kind of that fluid leak look a little bit to it. And what I'm trying to capture here is, is, is the theory or the concept that I, we've talked about, I talked about this for a minute, um, in the aircraft world, it's a bit of an anomaly. Truth be told is, is I think if you look at a lot of model kits, cars, trucks, tanks, ships, um, even submarines to a point, anything where you have, I guess, a a building process of a frame with with a sheet metal form and you've got you know panel gaps and you've got this the way aircraft even modern aircraft they're all constructing these little panels that go together you know that whole con like a like a puzzle you've always got the gaps in the lines that you're dealing with depending on the type of situation you know older planes newer planes whatever they're always pretty tight even back to world war one they're pretty tight gaps um but with with plastic injected molded kit manufacturing even an extent to resin stuff you know, the surface detailing that we get, that we have to deal with, it's a little bit of a lie. It's a little bit of a fake lie. We have all this kind of stuff, you know, and, and that's a bit of a lie. Truth is, um, and how that works and how we're supposed to represent that and how we're supposed to come out with that. And, and what's happened because of that is over time, one is because not to be a dick, but men are lazy or, you know, model builders we have, but we have a, we're predetermined to go down the road of least resistance. So the pin washes around all these happy little panel gaps creates this look. And the reality is when you look at the planes, when you, when you go back to this stuff, 
Um, you know, if you go into there, just flip open this one. This is a decent example. It's a more subtle one, but it's it's a decent example. Um, and it's and it's something to, to think about. It's really hard to deal with because of the way that the plastic model kits are made today for us and how we're supposed to come up with this. And I think the newer stuff, the newer newest mold stuff is really starting to, to capture the, the, the effect better. But when you look at the gaps, when you look at the panels on this, you know, what you're looking at here, when I'm looking at, you know, that exhaust comes through here, right? So that particular gap gets more intense because it gets more dirt and grime and grease. And some of these other ones back here are almost invisible. And how do you play that up when, when your model has all these perfect little lines engraved into the surface? And of all the genres of model building, it's the hardest one to go, okay, well, we have to back this off because if you're going for hyper-realism and or if you're really trying to, to do this kind of stuff, honestly, in a, in a true conversation, we often just default to fuck it. We're putting the pin washes everywhere and this is what it is. And we all, I mean, it looks, doesn't look bad. We like it, don't get me wrong. But is that really the case all the time? And it's kind of something that's in the bin and, you know, if I put the Rinaldi cap on and like, where am I going with this? How am I going to do this? What's the procedure? What are we really looking at? How are we going to get into this? Um, and certain aircraft, you know, like I would say a Sky Raider in Navy colors, the, the gray Sky Raiders. I mean, it's it's a slightly different conversation because of just the way that plane was, you know, it's, it's type of structure and stuff kind of lends itself to it. Okay. But, you know, when we're going to get into this. I'm staring at this going, dude, where's the panel lines? You know, and this is kind of like, well, how do we do this? You know, and where do we take the painting and the weathering to achieve what this is? And so there, there is a, a disconnect because the kits, the way they're made, force us into that corner almost. And that's not anybody's fault. It's just the, the byproduct of how this all happened. You know, so what I'm trying to do, what you see me doing here on, on this guy, what I'm trying to get across with the oils in particular is... This is another great photo. You're getting a really good ammo uh, a cover break right there, but you're getting some really nice discolorations between the variations of the panels. It's a great explanation, a visual explanation of, of how that kind of works and what you see me doing or what I'm trying to achieve with this versus pin washing and sludge washing and the flurry wash and wiping the shit off. And here you go, happy dude. It doesn't look like that. Half the time it does. I mean, it, it can. Don't get me wrong. But what I'm really trying to capture is... I'm looking at this going, okay, what's next level? Where are we going with this? What's going to happen? This is what I'm after. This shit right here. So this is really the perception of what it is with, you look at what we're dealing with from, from the plastic kit world and what they give us. And it's a bit of a lie. It kind of is, you know, and it, but it's just because how else are they going to make them? You know, how else are we going to do this? You know, it was the whole conversation. I think the famous one was the 32nd scale trunk was a dragon. P-51D Mustang came out 15 years ago, whatever that was. It was big on hyperscale at the time. Um, I don't even think the kit's around. <laughs> it came and went. Dragon was trying to be slick. $30, 30 seconds ago, whatever that was. Good deal. And it just had these like cut out divots of the rivets. It was just like this half dome pushed in and it was really excessive and you could see it. And when you look at the plane, you're like, dude, that's not on the surface. It's not what that looks like. And I know what we're talking about when, you, when you're doing the, the riveting of aircraft and all that kind of stuff, like what's going on, the physical engineering of it. So my point is with paint, with oil paints in particular, is my personal perception is I think the black basing does certain things to, to the kind of the way we work because you're working within the confines of the plastic model. But with the oil paints, what I'm trying to do is break out of that from kind of the conversation to airbrush, 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 all the stuff we've done over decades and break it into, well, how do I get this? Because you it's hard to do that with that whole process. Like, how do you, you have to be a master airbrusher to come in here and get that coloration through the OD and all that kind of smoky with the air. Dude. I mean, there's a couple of you, you can't, but you know, you know what I mean? And as a smaller scale you go, the harder this, this conversation, you know, gets into this, the hardcore stuff. So. It's where I want to take things, you know, um, it's the end game here. And I think e even just saving this little bit, you know, fixing this guy coming up in here um, and, and what we're going to get here. If, if, if Mr. Camera dude will, will play with me here is what you're seeing me do. Oops, it's like jam into everything. Okay, hold on. It's all a little bit tight in here. I'm going to ruin that book. That book is money. So what you try to see, so what you see me working here is instead of, in other words, you've got this wing root, wing root gap, right? It's in the model. 
But instead of running that pin wash all the way through with an even tone, because it, it just doesn't look that way, because what I'm trying to say is it's just, just, there's intensity variations across the surface, especially wartime. So that's what I'm trying to do with the oils is I'm varying the intensity of things at certain location points to kind of recreate that what I'm seeing. And then some areas I'm not even doing anything. I'm just letting the color bump up against that gap and just let it be like right what you see like right in here. There's almost no color in there, but there's a little bit of, of change of color. So I just kind of let it bump up into that. You know, even here, you even with the airbrush work, you can kind of see, you know, what's happening a little bit. So I'm going to be working with that and we'll get into that a little bit more. I mean, I think we did honestly, given where I was the last time we painted this, I actually saved that pretty solid. It's a little sharp, strong gray for me, but maybe that desert thingy. I do like the light middle stone that I sprayed back over. It's kind of a patchiness kind of vibe to that. That turned out pretty cool. That was a bit of a save. So you can see how I don't, I don't quilt out the whole thing. I do break up some panels. You know, but again, I kind of really try to focus on their pro on what they're for and why that is. It's not it's not very random. And you can see here from the top down, what happens is when you start to chip and wear and burnish that, you get that look right in there. Uh, that you get that color change just from the burnishing of the paint with the brush. And if you recall what we did back in the in the beginning. So what you're seeing in here, so to that conversation, again, look at this heavily weathered, worn out bird. You don't see a lot of the black lines everywhere. So there, it's a little bit of a lie. You see them some places, but yeah, there's an obliqueness to the angle. You're not seeing the panels directly, but it is trying to control that. And you see how tight this all is. I mean, this is, this is a, you know, 1943 P38 dusted. And you can see that the leaks and the grimes and so, but this, but right in here, you see the, you see it in the photo, matte, 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 sheen, 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 boots, gear, camo, parachutes, maintenance, dudes here, this part here. You can get that by burnishing the mat down. And that's why I'm going through that process. You saw it on that wing root where it darkens up because it's getting glossier and smoothing out as I'm burnishing with the chipping brush. And that's what you're seeing up in, in here with, with that wing root right there. That's just chipping. That's just chipping, burnishing the paint right up in there. So these, this right there, that's how you achieve that kind of look. And we're going to do, and when you do it with an OD, it really sings. So that's a great photo, dude. All right. I think that's enough. <laughs> I think I pushed my limits of reality of, of, of what we're capable. We did a lot today. Once I got going, um, a lot of good stuff in this video. Probably gonna have to pull it out. I'll put the time chapter stamps in tomorrow. You guys can zip through later. I'll put some good photos up on Patreon and, and Instagram too. too. Just kind of kind of early days. It's the early part of the oil weathering. It's just kind of, you know, walk before you can run, get get kind of a vibe in the feel of the model. That's often what I do, uh, especially because I shift gears so much. Um, you know, where say someone like Lou Fram, he's he building and paint a lot of stuff. He's rotating through. And so you get that, you, you he's lubed up enough and I'm rusty. Rusty McNusty, I was rusty with that airbrush work, but you know, kind of, kind of saved that a little bit. So yeah, and that, that I toned that down. That actually, I think, looks a lot better now. Um, and actually, I got, I finally got the shape to it, so I'm not too upset with that. This side, <laughs> it's a little bit dark, you know, but I think what I can do is I can come through and dust it. I can keep knocking that down with the oils um, and all that. But you can see how that's already starting to come in in terms of a weathered worn out bird. I've got to put the, the, the walkway on the other side too, but I'll do that later. But see that see that sheen as I rotate that through there with the polished paint as it burnishes out? And then see how the wing walk goes back to a mat under the, uh, that's really hard to do otherwise. So that's why I chip that first and then I wing walk that and then chip that. So, so there's your decal marking varnish. That's That's kind of just the bulk of it. I'm sorry, Zal. I feel bad, brother. You got up so early, man. I mean, I, you know, I know you're the only one back in that part of the world I really care about. So I don't, I don't really alter my stream times. I I stick my hand in the wheel probably again. Um, yeah. So Brian, so back, yeah, I saw you commenting up there, Brian. So he says, so rather than all over wash the street and the major panel. Yeah. And I've been doing that for years. If you, if you guys read any of the things I've written, you know, um, if you have, you should, if you haven't, 
link down below in the description. <laughs> wink, wink. Um, yeah, I mean, this is how I've been doing stuff for, for since Hornet Hobbies. I don't know when you guys remember that was. Whenever Hornet Hobbies hits, um, trying to remember the year. Would have been. I really started to do this section by section thing, probably like 2013, 2014. Um, and breaking it down and, and, and what you're seeing me do and, and what the point of that is, um, as my brain's processing this out, you know, the point of this is I really want to see what's going to happen. I need to flesh out all of this. And, and if I was to go through, and this is where another conversation for you guys to think about is when you're, when you're panel lining or pin washing your models, you're breaking into just, I'm just doing the pin washing. You're focused on that. And you kind of lose sight of kind of the overall end game a little bit in the sense that if, if you focus on a small area and really work it out, work out what's happening. Like you saw me working out what was happening with the exhaust staining through that area and the capture of that greasiness that gets stuck in there a little bit. And this I know will be kind of my more intense weathering because that's where that exhaust is coming through. And so even over time, and I'm kind of playing this up like a, you know, maybe it's a five sortie a day combat bird in North Africa, what if Tempest? You know, but I'm thinking of P-40 Kitty Hawks and I'm thinking of Spitfires in Malta. I'm thinking of hurricanes in the desert or even at 109s and whatnot, you know, that whole thing of just that intensity of combat that happens there. And so I'm working out all of that first. And then from there, I can extrapolate out the story moving along. And there's no there's no hurry. The oils go down, they dry, they're boom, they're done. That's it. You know, I don't have to worry about it. I'm not varnishing anything later or any of that sort. I've already got my glosses from the from the chippiness being chippy and sassy and all <laughs> being a little short with you guys today um but yeah that's part of this all, all this works out this way that's why you see the process order what's going on so hopefully enough of me ranting and raving about the goods and the bads did i miss any questions did i miss anything i feel like i missed a lot having a panel line doesn't mean you have to fill it with washing dressing colors value you create to look different panels without having every panel line in the same color absolutely that's what that is. It's really, really getting into the nitty gritty, the hardcore of, you know, you guys are here for a reason, you know, you know, you support RSP for the whole, you know, the rig and roll. Um, I'm not selling you a panel wash product. You know, I'm selling you the idea that your skill sets give you the, the ability to write your stories. That's what I'm teaching you. So that's what the goal of all of this is to really get in here and say, well, how do you, how do you look at that photo and, and replicate it? Now we're in the aircraft. We're getting pretty serious with that. Now we're getting kind of up and, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah, Dave still makes models as far as I know. He's still going. Dave will always be making models. Dave Brown. Dave Brown. My boy's in Toronto. Uh, and Trish, his wife, his lovely wife. Okay. Yeah. That turned out right. Not bad. A lot of pressure, though. <laughs> A little bit nervous with that airbrush. Um, are you using your iMac camera for your image? No. It's, it's the iPhone, iPhone 13. It's the phone right in front of my face, but it uses a, to, to turn your phone. So you have to understand the technology. And I had to learn this too. Uh, if you put your phone in video mode and you connect it to the computer and you try to make a YouTube video, like you can film something and it'll record it. But when we're doing a live stream, so this is happening on the fly, the videos goes into record mode, so it doesn't work. So you need a special webcam app that turns the phone into a webcam so that it streams through the computer, a little cord there. And it comes out and you see the you see the feed. Um, so there's it's a thing for that. Because um, your phones won't do that automatically. I wish they would, but maybe in the future they will. Um, if you're kind of talking about letting your eye create the panel line rather than actually, yeah, exactly. And there's a lot of the illustration uh, vernaculars here. Um, it kind of plays into like what you see me doing here with this guy. It's, it's the same conversation in terms of how do I attack the panel lines. And what you see me doing is, what you saw was, if you go back to the stream last time, is you'll see me build up the color. I go from a darker version of the base color. So it was kind of a, it was that blue gray color. I build in, I put, I, because I'm rusting this one up, I start putting a little oranges and rust tones into the panel lines. I start throwing color into that gap. You know, it's like, it's like the, the, the red cup game. You know, you keep trying to get that color into the, into the panel gaps in there. It's the same kind of, you keep building it up. So I don't go in hard, one line, boom, done everywhere. Like that's not what I do. I never do that. So if you're trying to replicate what this is, you have to kind of back yourself up a little bit and go, okay, he's not doing that. So, and that's kind of what I'm trying to say is that the color buildup is, is as it goes versus a step of panel lines on everything. Same for Gundam, same for tanks. 
all that stuff. This is how it, I've always been doing it for the last decade or so, if not more. I just haven't been teaching it that way. So same thing over here. See how you don't really see them? You, you know, you've got the, the stuff in there. You've got the gaps in there. And then I'm trying to manipulate that over here. So I kind of build it up as that's an open hatch. What I'm trying to do with that. But see, I've got it, I've got it more intensified up in here and then down in here. And I'm kind of working with the areas of wear and tear heaviest. The panel gets darker. Same idea. Or if it's a, a bleed out, it really, it really, uh... yeah, it's a 13 Pro. And it does a really good job. In fact, when I pull it off of the, the thing, when you're taking like regular stuff, it does an amazing job. In fact, the quality, it deadens the quality too. I would like it because it is a 4K phone. It will shoot 4K and the videos are pretty, pretty crazy. Um, it is a hard habit to break. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of what I'm, it's, it's, it's basically you guys have to sit down and, and accept the fact that, okay, if I do dark panel lines and I'm used to like in the gunpla world, you pull out the, the, the Tamiya panel liner in black or the dark brown. Those are intensely dark colors. All of them, all your models, first off, they all look the same. Now, if you're a clean builder and you just want a panel line effect, that's one conversation, but what we're talking about is a little bit different. So what I'm also trying to do is tell a story with each model. And so a lot of you probably just here for the shit show and the entertainment, but when the serious guy gets here and the coach is here and we're, the, the game time and we got to get ready, this is game planning. Like, what am I doing? My end game is to really pull in. I want to, I want to nail that. So that's, I'm, I'm studying kind of like, see how that, that lower corner intensifies right through here. And you've got the bleed outs of that through there, all that through there and that bleed, the oil bleeding through the paint as it was, you know, lubed or maintenance and it's it seeped out through the paint. That's what all that is. And then you've got the, this kind of light discolor, all this kind of stuff. That's what I'm after. You just can't do it with the typical, Hey guys, here's my, you know, panel liner and this is what I'm doing. And I'm just wiping it. No, no, bro. That's not how that works. So that's what I'm trying to get to hopefully. So, yeah. Sorry for the rant, but <laughs> I got to hit it home sometimes. Um, so much to the UN, so much. To, yeah. And there's a lot of times too, if you're, if you're coming from, I spent a decade doing that, that this kind of Zal and, and patty cakes and everything. I spent 10 years painting that way. And that's what was frustrating. Cause I'm like, it shit doesn't look like this dude. Like, what are we doing? Uh, I'm not here to sell, you know, bottles of enamel weathering product. Uh, do some figures. I would too, Keith. I'll, I'll do some figures. There's a, there's a Japanese dude on Instagram right now that's just doing these these female figures post-apocalyptic thing. They're in the bikini with the, the thing. I think some of you have seen it. Dude, it's just, it's off the chain. It's like, get out of here, dude. But MoFo is using a, using a, a, a chemist microscope. So that's the newest thing. If you guys haven't seen this thing. So instead of the eyeballs, you know what I call the, the readers, the eyeballs. They're pulling in microscopes. So they're here with the like the, the scientist microscopes, you know, a hundred times zoom with the brush. I'm like, oh, you cheating mofo, which is fine. That kind of cheating I respect. So, yeah, because he's painting like eyeballs and I don't know what scale that is. Maybe maybe 20th scale or whatever that was. I think they're machine and Krieger size figures. Um, I forget the dude's name. It's some of you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, did I miss any other questions, though? Hopefully this was an informative stream. And this is what I want to get into because I think for me, for aircraft to really embrace it fully to where I want to go and the non-US Navy jet conversation, the hyper-weathered Navy jet stuff, which is, you know, kind of easier to, to fall back on, you know, combat weathering, World War II combat weathering, various theater weathering, you know, really looking at like Rabul or Solomon's or North Africa, Tobruk or, you know, Sicily squadrons, you know, up to D-Day squadrons in the mud. And then, you know, East, Eastern Front dudes, Russia, studying that stuff and, and really pulling out, picking that stuff out and say, okay, well, how do we do that? And using the brushes and, and the paints and stuff to really kind of get there. So this is this is the test run, proof of concept, you know, kind of get this across. We'll dive in the P61. P61 will follow the P38 pretty hard in terms of reference photos just because they're better. Because they, they're pretty cool. So, yeah. That's a little, that, it, that airbrush stains a little much. But it's in the realm of I can live with that. I don't remember off top. I have my it's on my phone, Sal. So I'd have to, I can't look at Instagram right now. I'll send you the dude's thingy. Um, he's got a long name. I forget what his name is. It starts with an M. He does he does a YouTube channel as well. And he, he does live streams. Um, I'll put I'll, maybe I'll put his name in the description if I get it. Yeah, there's a virtual reality microscope that uses a phone plus magnifying glass and gets a stupid zoom. Makes me. <laughs> yeah. So. If I pull this off and put it in the phone mode, the actual iPhone 13's Pro's macro setting 
I can get on that surface and, and you can see every paint granule. It's so tight. Uh, but yeah, no, I love aircraft too. By the way, guys, no, I do. Aircraft was actually my first love. So it's just, it's been a long time since I've really been able to dive into this. Um, but I would say expect, you know, the, the major hotspots of the, particularly World War II stuff, but even into Korea and Vietnam, you know, and even in the maybe deserts, you know, some of the desert stuff and then some of the, some of the, the European conflicts, the modern stuff. I mean, when you like, there's some Ukrainian aircraft photos right now, if you're not seeing them, um, you know, how that paint's wearing off because I think the quality of the paint was lesser. So there is, you know, you talk about manufacturing qualities that relates to certain things and how that happens. And so, yeah. I uh, hope you are too, Nog. I hope you feel better soon, man. Keep in touch. I'll, I'll talk to you this week um, just to say hello again. I see how you're doing. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I'll DM you, Joe. You got it. Um, he's really good, though. Yeah, it's, it's impressive stuff. You guys have all probably seen this stuff. He, he's, he's going kind of viral right now. Uh, I forget his name. But the, the girls, he's painting these two girls in bikinis with like this, like, um, like uh, smoke ma or you know mass uh, you know gas mass and stuff on them like post-apocalyptic uh the battle of the bold 60s when they use m60 patent tanks for pandas <laughs> yeah. oh yeah though so you're pack yeah you're talking about the movie stuff yeah i got off on the sideway there you guys caught that yeah um there's there's a couple in um there's a couple scenes too the even newer movies um the hunt for red october when they're doing all the navy carrier stuff and it's like korean war stuff to show a wreck you're like dude wait that's not a time it's like a panther <laughs> like what is that maverick's coming out what we got a couple we, the end of the month i saw the trailer for maverick top gun 2 baby see now that's a movie i still respect though first off 19 what was it 83 84 dude that is that is the highlight of high school for me and that movie came out with top gun but if you if you study the making of that movie, they did a lot of work on the actual filming and the flybys and the sequences. They did a great job in terms of like consistency. That movie actually holds up pretty well. You know, they painted the uh, the MiG MiG twenty eights, <laughs> the F fives. All right, guys, we're gonna bounce. Everybody, good. We had a long stream, three and a half. Um, did I miss anything else? I see Robert Alanayak. I said all the best from the North Sea. Oh, sweet, dude. I love, I love where all you guys are at. The, the, my biggest fun is, is always the international. Um, so Robert, I'm sorry, I missed you here. Rob, let me go back up real quick. Robert, as a seafarer, I rarely get to watch you work live. I usually download your content in bulk and play at the same time as I'm working uh, on my small projects on my boat while, while it's gently rolling. That's super cool, Robert. Um, thank you for helping me reach a new level and a wonderful hobby. You're welcome. That's really cool. I don't know if you guys saw that guy's post, the Robert uh, Ladniak. Is that how I say that? Where are you from, Robert, if you're still on stream? Post up where are you? 86? 86 is a great show. 86 was the year of Top Gun. There's also an anime called 86. Pretty cool. Robert, where, where are you in the North Sea at? Are you, um, is that a Norwegian name? Where, where are you from? Very cool. I love all that stuff. Douglas Riemann. Remember that name. If you want some of the best uh, books to read, especially about naval combat, uh, Douglas Riemann, also a.k.a. Alexander Kent, I believe he worked under two pseudonyms. Um, his books, Douglas Riemann books, are fantastic. Uh, Naval, North Sea, Poland. Okay, sweet. That is really cool. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. That's pretty cool. That's pretty unique. He's got you beat, Zal, because Zal's Singapore. Singapore. So Polish seafarer. I love it, dude. In the North Sea. Uh, problem with high magnification magnifies your hand moments too. Yeah, so I'm sure there's a learning curve with working with the magnif uh, a microscope setup in terms of hobby painting. Um, but I will say to the dudes at Madworks, if you guys don't know this company, I believe they're a Chinese company, Madworks. They make all sorts of sanding tools and stuff. They have a fantastic YouTube channel. I just fell upon it the other day and they do English subtitles. They're a group of young businessmen who are just working hard to make really cool stuff for us in the hobby. Uh, a lot of, lot of props to these dudes too, but they have a whole setup where they're working on their Gundams and they're doing 3D printing, modifying stuff, custom building stuff, but they're using these microscopes to build and detail out in a clean build scenario too. So it's pretty, pretty unique too. Uh, where's the North Sea is? Uh, yeah, the other side of the, the deal. Um, but yeah. All right, guys. Uh, this was fun. Uh, kind of hectic. Kind of stressful, but good stress. I think we pulled off. I think I pulled it off. Uh, look forward to more. Uh, next week, uh, railroad. Let's do some rail. I'm gonna swap back in, get the Santa Fe engine. 
Um, we're going to go through a similar idea because it's going to be fresh in our minds with the, remember how I had the problem with the oils in that one? Because it was not matte coated and it was kind of greasy from my, from my handling days. Uh, so we'll be doing some railroad, um, some more color work, trying to really push color theory, working with colors, working with the weathering colors. Like you saw me working with tones of the model to weather the model. If that makes sense. Uh, hopefully that resonates too. Versus just like, you know, like a gray or a black or whatever. I'm working with actual colors of the, of the pieces too. Uh, you're welcome, Antonio. Yeah, next week we'll do some railroad. Uh, this guy will probably be three, four weeks. We'll rotate. We'll do railroad. I got to get back on tanks and then we're going to put back up the Mecca dude and wrap him up. I've got a, I've got a really cool plan for the blue Mechatro kit um, that I kind of developed over the weekend. Um, <laughs> there's a fun fact. Robert says, my father recorded Top Gun for me on VHF. Uh, <laughs> he cut out the set. <laughs> Did he really? Uh, with, with the with the you, the Berlin song, right? Berlin. Dude, I used to love that band. Berlin was a shit in the 80s and 90s. I love that alternative synth. All right, guys. Uh, watch like 20 before you saw the uncut version. That's funny. Yeah, I love where she gets mad at him after that, too, by the way. Yeah, he's such a kind of douchey bag in that one. It's such a douchebag movie, but it's so good. It's so, like, if you watch Terminator and Top Gun, like that genre of movies, they're so good. So good. I miss those days, boys. Miss them. All right, you guys all be good. Uh, thank you, Tommy McDaniel. I appreciate that. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, sorry for some of the sound hiccups earlier. I'll double check and make sure all my setups, you know, good to go next time. Uh, that one caught me off guard a little bit. Um, it, well, it's sexy and then there's two people having sex. They don't really, see, you don't see nothing. Um, but it's kind of moody, romantic. The lights turn down, the music comes on. It's kind of funny. Uh, too, for, too close for guys. <laughs> You're funny, Jeff. All right, guys, thank you again uh, for hanging out with me. Uh, we did a fair amount of work on Mr. Tempest, dude. Uh, look forward to more, uh, and I will see you guys next Wednesday, same time. Uh, I don't have anything coming up, so we should be on schedule for a while. Uh, and appreciate you guys doing a Friday with me last week as well. You guys take care. I'm out. Have a good one. Uh, enjoy the rest of your week.